was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood. It was my Savior's blood for me. teach us how to pray, for we know not what to pray for as we are. I ask thee in the name of Jesus to lead and to guide us by the Holy Spirit, to fill us with your Holy Spirit and the good words and the good things from your Spirit. We thank you for this morning, thank you for this day, thank you for our health and our strength. Pray that you will lead and guide us in your word into all truth. We pray that the Holy Spirit may dwell us and fill our hearts, souls, and minds. That our eyes may be enlightened and we may understand your word this morning. We thank you for what you are doing, what you have done in this ministry, through this ministry, and with this ministry. We thank you for initiating and establishing this ministry. We pray that you justify it, declare it innocent, not guilty. Declare the preaching and the teaching of the word that is preached and is taught, innocent and not guilty, through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ by his blood. We pray for spiritual wisdom, knowledge, and understanding this morning. 
Cause us to focus and to be attentive to your word, your will, and your way. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, Amen. Amen. We thank God again for being here. This morning we're going to start off, we're going to be talking about two words. Two words I have on the board here. And it's the word resurrection and the word grace. Those are two of the most important words that is in the Bible as a concern us as being children of God. Anybody know what is the most important Greek word it is to the believer in the Bible? Anybody know what is the most important Greek word it is to those that call themselves children of God? Yes. What is it? Agape. Agape. Agape is the most important word there is in the believer's life. That is the word agape. That is the Greek word love. That is the Greek word love. And it means walking. It means walking. And we know the word walking means living. It means living. It's something that you do. It's a lifestyle. It means walking or living in the commandments. In the commandments. In the commandments. Not the way you interpret them. In the commandments of a king. And we know the king is Jesus. Of a king in a kingdom. In the kingdom of God, the Bible tells us the kingdom of God is in us. That's where the kingdom of God is located. The kingdom of God is in us. I have some definition. Okay. And the kingdom of God is in us. That's what it tells us. We're walking in the commandments of a king and a kingdom. And the kingdom of God is in us. The soul is where the spirit dwells. The soul is she. Because that's what it's called in the scripture. The soul is she which worships God and serves God in spirit and truth. If we be technical, if we use detail, we serve God with the mind. That's what the Apostle Paul told us. We serve God with the mind. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him, must worship him in spirit and truth. Let's worship him in spirit and truth. Because the Father seeketh such to worship him. This is what the scripture tells us. So in order for us to worship God in spirit and truth, we must be given a new heart or a new mind. We must be given a new heart, a new mind, or a new understanding. And so in giving us that new heart, that new mind, and that new understanding is given to us from the Holy Spirit, sent by the Father and the Son, and has given us power. This is called power. This is power. This is power. This is power <laughs> here. This is dunamis. This is power right here, and this is power right here. All of this comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is the other comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of truth, Spirit of truth, all of these terms is the same thing. We as a people, especially those of us who claim and profess to believe in predestination and sovereignty of God, we hear these terms one time and we believe we understand them when we need to go over them over and over again because all of them is the same thing. All of them is the same thing. The interpreters, those who translated, those who translated the scriptures, they don't want to put these words in the Bible like that, founded upon which individual that would be uh, translating the portion of scripture that they was working on. But all of these terms is the same person. This is the same person. This is the same person. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Ghost, and the Comforter. It is a He. It is a He. He is the same person all the way through grace. And he implants or deposits or, or instills resurrection in us. 
He instills resurrection in us. And he instills grace in us. And he gives us agape. Then there's another word which is very important too, but this is the most important word of God, is the word agape. Then we have faith. Then we have the word faith. Then we have the word faith. And all of these words are spiritual words that is depositing to the soul of man. It's depositing to a soul. The soul has felt the she's in it. And so we need these attributes, we need these characteristics of God in our soul in order for us to serve God and to worship God in spirit and to worship God in truth. Without these in the soul, we cannot serve God uprightly. We cannot serve God uprightly because resurrection means the lifting up. Resurrection is a moral recovery of spiritual truth. It's being raised from the dead. And the soul died. The soul died. And the soul died. The soul died in Adam in the garden. The soul died in Adam in the garden. Turn your Bibles to Genesis. Turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 2. Because we're still struggling, and many are struggling with the understanding of <clears throat> who you are, 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 and what you have become or are becoming. And we are becoming children of God. I said we are becoming children in God. In God's eyesight, those in God's eyesight and in God's presence, those who have been elected and chosen by God, in his eyesight and his, in his presence, it is done already. We being here on earth, we are going through the process of salvation. The process of salvation begins when you are born again. There first must be a conversion. Many people don't understand. There must first be a conversion or an awakening. And then there must be a, a, a birth. Once the birth takes place, the soul begins a life, a journey rather, a, a journey of salvation or deliverance from self or the carnal mind or the flesh, depending on what scripture you are reading at the time that you are reading. And all these terms are interchangeable. All these terms are interchangeable. We just don't remember them and we don't study enough. We don't study enough to really recognize and understand what the Word of God is saying. So I told you go to Genesis. I told you go to Genesis chapter 2. Give me a minute here. I had a, def I had a couple of definitions. Because I'm going to do something this morning. And... I must have laid them down. I'll just read from the Strong's Concordance. Two of the words. The words is porneros and zima. But I'm going to read. I'll read them from the Strong's Concordance. Because I want to show you something this morning. I want to make you aware of something this morning. Uh, Genesis chapter 2. And we want to start. We want to read. This is 2154. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Okay, I got this set. All right. Genesis chapter 2. <clears throat> and where do I want to go, young preacher? Genesis chapter 2. We want verse number. Genesis chapter 2. We want verse number. Verse number, verse number seven. The Lord God, the Lord God formed. Y'all know what the word form is? I go through this all the time. What is the word form? Yatsar. The word form is the word Yatsar. Everybody in here should know that. I should be able to, I should be able to go to any individual over here, probably except Terry McKnight and ask you, what is the word form? You should say Yatsar. 
I should be able to go to any individual and say, what's the word for? Yes, sir. I should be going over here and actually ask anybody what's the word does. And what is the word does? Afar. Afar. See, Charles shouldn't be the only one know that. I should be able to go to JD, Caleb, Gabrielle, Jeremiah, Glenn, Mama Rodney, and, and Van, Rose, Neil, Josiah, and just ask you the word without you looking at it. You should know this. You've been in this ministry a long time. This is what happened to others that was in the ministry a long time. They took for granted that they understood and knew the word of God, and they did. These words are very important. These words are important in your life. More important than the check you get in the mail. More important than the house that you have. These words are very important. More than the air that you are breathing on this earth. These words that are written was written by the Holy Spirit for your moral recovery of spiritual truth. They was written for divine influence upon the heart, the mind, or the understanding with his reflections in the life. All of these words that we read were written by the Holy Spirit. That is the reason why I put the word resurrection up on the board this morning. And the word grace, the word grace is the word charis. It's divine influence upon the heart, the understanding, the mind, because the soul is died, the die. So now we got to be influenced and motivated. It has to be recovered. It has to be recovered. The soul has to be morally recovered. The soul has to be recovered, and the soul has to be influenced. And then that influence that comes from the Holy Spirit is, re is, is re reflected in life. That person believes because faith is imparted. God sheds abroad the love of God in our heart. Faith is given. Faith is a gift. God sheds abroad the love of God in our hearts. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. When the Holy Ghost is given to us, the power and the attributes and the characteristics of Jesus Christ or the Holy Ghost is embedded and still and implanted in us. We need divine influence in the soul, in the heart, the understanding, and the mind so that we can love God, live, in, live for God to walk in the commandments of a king and a king. It's very important that you know these words. Very important. I don't care what nobody tells you. Your pastor telling you. It's very important for you to know these words so you can understand what God has done for you, which you profess he has. You have made a profession that this has happened to you. This is what you say when you say, I am a child of God. You say, I am in the process of having a moral recovery of spiritual truth that I lost in the garden, that I lost in Adam. That's where I lost it at. And I have grace. I have divine influence upon my heart, my understanding, and my mind. And I have the reflections of that divine influence in my life and my soul. I love God and I walk by faith. Mm -hmm. This is what you are professing, just in case you didn't know. And this is what has happened. This is what is happening to us that are true worshipers of God. Everybody is not a true worshiper of God. Okay? So we have Genesis chapter 2, verse number 7. It says, The Lord God, Jehovah, the self existent Elohim, He shaped, He Yasar, He formed man of the Afar, A P H A R. The word, the word, the word dust is the word Afar. And Afar means what? Afar means clay. That's what it means. It's clay. That's what Afar is. Afar is clay. Now, that Afar, that Afar that is clay, how did it come about? We look back up to Genesis chapter, we stay in Genesis chapter 2, <clears throat> and we look at verse number 5. It says, there went up a mist from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. So we got mist and we got ground. And we got this mist water in the ground. Now God, now God can, now God can, this is all the work of God. Now God can speak to the dust or speak to the ground with the word and bring it together to shape a body. This is where we get our body shaped from. We get our body shaped from the dust of the ground because of the mist, this mixed 
with the ground and God speaks. God speaks. God speaks. God speaks to the ground. And once God speaks to the ground, once God speaks to the ground, the ground obeys God. Everything obeys God. The ground obeys God. The ground obeys God. God speaks his word to the ground and the ground obeys God. And what the ground does is the Lord, he, the, what the ground does is for man. Founded upon the, the word of God. All God has to do is speak to it. And it will do what God, quote, created and willed for the ground to do. The ground does what God wants it to do. The Lord God formed man, Yatsar, shaped him of the afar, the dust of the ground. And once he freshly shaped it from the dust of the ground, he does something else. It's the work. This is called the work of God. God is preparing man, just like he's preparing our souls for heaven. He's preparing man for the work he wants him to do in the garden. And that's what God is doing. So God birth, God breathes into this man. He, he breathes into this man. He breathes into this man breath. That's what he does. He breathes into this man breath. That's what he gives him. And he breathes. And he breathes. And he breathes. He neshama. It means to blow. He breathes into the nostrils, the breath. The breath is Neshema. The first is Neshema. It's the breath of God that's spiritual. This is the origin of man. This is the origin and the beginning of man. This is the origin and the beginning of man. He breathed into him the breath of life and man became something that he wasn't. He became a living soul. That's what he became. The breath is Neshema, means a puff, or wind. He breathed in them the breath, inspiration, intellect, soul, spirit. Then he gets life. That means he's running. He's, he's springing. The man is lively. He's quickened. Come from the word kaya, the word, the word life is the word K, C H A Y. C H A Y, that's the word K, or K A, that's the word life, it's the word K A, C H. A Y C H A Y. Now he has life. He has life in him. And now he's, he's breathing. Excuse me. The word breathe is the word nafak. When he says breathe, the word breathe. B R E A T H E D. That's the word nafak. N A P H N A P A C H. That's the word nafak. He breathed in the man. That means he blew into man. That's what God did. Oh man, say it again, preacher. They didn't even hear that. That's what God did. That's what God did, preacher. That's what God did. And the only way that you can understand, on the, way, the only way you can understand this, the only way you got to have grace, you got to have divine influence, you got to have faith, and the love of God has to be shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost that is given to you for you to, to believe this and truly understand it. He said, the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed. Nafak rose, he nafak man. Breathe, it means to blow hard or to puff. It means to give up life. It means to, it means to expire, breath out. And man... <laughs> was it received inch by your breath in. The word nafak, breathe, means to cause to live. It means to cause to live. It means to cause to live. That's what God did to man. He breathed in him the breath, the neshama, a puff, that is wind. That means divine inspiration. The word breath, B-R-E-A-T-H. That is the word neshama, which means divine inspiration. Then you got life, you got K. Now man's alive. Now man is alive. He's alive. Now he can worship God, he can have contact with God. And then it says, man became a living, 
man became a living, a quickened soul. The word soul is the word nefesh. The word soul, the word soul, the word soul is the word nefesh, N-E-P-H, N-E-P-H-E-S-H. -E -E That's the word nefesh. That's the word nefesh. It means the soul. That is the true self. I said the true self. That's the creature. That's the person with the appetite and a mind. That's the living being with desire, emotion, and passion. That's the, that's the living soul with activity of mind. Actuality of will, of character. That's the living being with life. That's the soul. And God told this man that the day that he eat from the knowledge of good and evil, he will surely die. What is going to die? Everybody look at your Bible. If you look at the scripture, Genesis 2, verse number 7, the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground, breathing to his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So when man died, who died? You look at your scripture, who died? Why did the soul die? Why, how do we know why did the soul die? Why did, we don't need to go out of that side of that scripture. We don't need to leave that scripture in order to answer the question. The soul died because the soul was what? Living. It was living. The soul died because at one point the soul was living. The soul died. It did not say the dust died. It did not say the dust died. It did not say the dust died. It didn't say the dust died. The dust can't die. The dust didn't surely die. Well, surely die was the soul because the soul is what had life in it. The soul had life in it. And mankind, man does not understand who he is. He's a soul. That's why that's who he is. That's why Jesus said, that's why the Lord said in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse number 4, the soul that sinned, that soul shall die. Sin begins in the soul. That's what sin begins at, is in the soul. Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. We want to look at the dying. We want to look at the dying rose of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we're going to Matthew for. We're going to look at Matthew to look at the dying of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to look at his mm -hmm. dying. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to look at. I want to look at Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. And we want to look at the dying. We don't look at the dying of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what we want to look at. We want to look at the dying of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I'm at Matthew 26 and I'm at verse number 31. It says, then said Jesus unto them, and we know that them is the eleven. We should know the story by now. I pray everybody's following along and is with me. Then Jesus said unto them, and we know the them that he is talking about is the eleven, because Judas has left to betray him. He said, all ye eleven, all ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. The sheep being those eleven. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, that this night before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, I will not contradict thee or deny thee 
likewise also said all the disciples following Peter. Because Peter said it, they want Christ to believe in them just as much as, he, as, as they think he believed in Peter. And they want to prove themselves just as much as Peter is seeking to prove himself. They want to receive the approval of Jesus the Christ just as much as Peter is seeking to receive the approval himself. So they say it's the same thing that Peter says. This is what people do who don't have knowledge and understanding, who don't have grace and resurrection power. They want to agree and be, and be seen as being approved of, founded upon what others say and do. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul, not my body, my soul is exceeding sorrowful. My soul even unto death. I'm sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. So my point is what I'm making and showing you is yet the soul is what died. Jesus' body went through the pain and the suffering. But the sorrow was in the soul because of the, because of the sin of mankind. So he died for your soul. Did not take, died for your body. He died for the soul because man's soul died in the garden. Now, I want to I wanna address something that needs to be addressed because I be preaching and Rose made this aware of me. She said, she was talking to Sky. She said, Sky said when you're preaching, she, you, she, she be understanding some things you say. She said, but when you go off and you start talking about when you start talking about those that went out from us, say that's when you lose her a little bit and she don't understand. This morning I'm going to be reading out of the shadow of the cross because I've been putting this off for a while, but today I'm going to read it because if she's feeling like that, I'm reading out of the shadow of the cross, I said. If you haven't, fine. If you don't, fine. I want to read out of the shadow of the cross because there's others out there that is hearing me preach. And they hear me talking about 1, Corinthians, 1 John 2.19, they went out from us. And they're not understanding what I am saying. What I am saying and I was speaking to this to Van yesterday, and I meditate on this all the time. I say, Van, you know I'm going to be preaching on they went out from us in apostasy for a long time. He said, yeah, I know that. I was just talking to Mama about that. I said, why do you know why I'm doing that, Van? He said, that's where we are today. That's exactly where we are today. He said, that's where this ministry is today. That's where God has brought this ministry. Do you have that book, Charles? Yes. Give it to Terry McKnight so she can follow along with us, please. He said, that's where God has brought us now. That's, that's where this ministry is. We all know in here, up under the sound of my voice, that we in this ministry have truly experienced Christianity. We have truly experienced and have personal and practical application of the Word of God in our lives and in this ministry. Amen. We have actually experienced and we are continuing to experience Christianity. And when I'm talking about Christianity, I'm talking about first century Christianity in the Bible. This ministry and we that are here are actually, are actually Walking in the commandments of a king in a kingdom. We are actually living Christianity. 
Christianity is a lifestyle. It is certain, it is something that you live. Now, it is something that you live. Now, <clears throat> so so we will be discussing apostasy. Mm -hmm. We will be discussing love. Mm -hmm. We're going to be discussing faith. We're going to be discussing all of these things to show that this is what the scripture says that will happen at the end of time. It must happen. If any man's ministry is worth anything, mm -hmm. all of these things that's taking place in first century Christianity must show up in their ministry. It's got to be in the ministry. Amen. We must partake of it. We must have personal involvement in suffering, persecution, and tribulation. We must go through it. It's, it's without a doubt. It is a necessity that it happen. For if it don't happen, we are not the people whom we profess to be that the scriptures describe us to be. We are not the people which people we profess to be that the scriptures describe us to be. Amen. If we don't have practical application of love, agape, grace, charis, resurrection, anastasis, faith, which is pistis, if we don't have it, we are not the people that we profess to be. And the scripture says that we are to be. Did we understand what I just said? Yes. So these things must happen. So if they don't happen, then we are not the people that the scriptures says that we are and the people we profess to be. Because some is not understanding when I go and start talking about them and they went out from among us and these are sensual and these are carnal minded. So Rose was talking to my daughter-in-law. Rose was talking to my daughter-in-law, Scott, and she asked Rose, you know, when he's preaching, I'll be all right, and then he go and he starts saying other things, and I'm not understanding sometimes what he is saying. How did we get to this place right here? We got to this place right here founded upon, we got to this place right here founded upon certain lewd fellows. That's how we got here. Because all of our experiences must be according to the Bible in harmony with the scriptures. And we must seek our experiences and personal involvement with the word of God under the power of the Holy Spirit from the scripture. So I want you to turn to Acts chapter 17. Because this is how we examine ourselves and measure ourselves. And that is with the word of God. This is first century Christianity. I want you to go to chapter 17. I want you to go to chapter 17. Go to chapter 17 of the book of chapter 17. Man, I, I'm looking for the definition. I already got the definition recorded in my Bible. I'm something else, ain't I? I'm something else, ain't I? I, I'm just used to writing definition. <laughs> Amen. All right. Look at, look at Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. I mean, Acts chapter 17. I mean, Acts 17. I mean, Acts 17. And I'm at verse number 5. It says, but the Jews which believed not moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd. Here's the word lewd. Certain lewd fellows. They took unto themselves certain lewd. L-E-W-D. That's our word ponera. That word paneros, the word paneros means to be hurtful and evil in effect. This is one of the words 
evil in the New Testament, hurtful. So remember words, they full of hurt, mm -hmm. they full of hurt, and they're evil in effect. Evil in effect or result. They're evil in effect. They mischief, mischief, full of mischief, full of mischief, full of mischief, and it says wicked. It says, the Jews which believed not moved with envy, took them to them, the Jews, certain lewd fellows of the baser, Agareos, Agareos of the baser, of the baser, the word baser is Agareos, B-A-S-E-R, is A, Agareos. A I O S. That's the word agarails, the baser sort. That means vulgar or low. That means vulgar. The vulgar means to be vulgar or low. It means to be vulgar or low. And gathered a company. Okay set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. He's talking about Paul and Silas. You look down at verse number one. It said, now when they had passed through Amphipolis, Apollo night, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And as and Paul, as his custom or as his matter was, went unto them, to the Jews in Thessalonica, three Sabbath days, and reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs had suffered and risen again, have suffered, that mean cruci been crucified, and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. Some of them believed and consorted with Paul. I mean, they associated themselves with Paul and Silas. And of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a fruit. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with them. He took them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company and set out the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason. This is how we got there. We got there, we're at this point where we are because of certain lewd fellows. We're at this point because of certain lewd fellows. So I want to read, I want to read out of the shadow of the cross the narrative and the discourse that was used to assault the house of the Nerahodos ministry. Mm -hmm. This is what was used to assault. So those that's out there that's watching us, they may be confused too. If Sky is feeling that way, a lot of other ones is feeling that way, and I'm going to seek to show them why I'm preaching and teaching the way I am. Now, we want to pick this up on page, on page, we want to pick this up, we want to pick this up on page number, we want to pick this up on page, I don't want to read all of this, we'll pick it up on page number 60. I start reading on page number 60. And on and beginning on page number 60, 60, in the shadow of the cross, the Christian ministry and self-denial. The Christian ministry and self-denial. Certain Louvre fellows of the baser sort, 
certain Lou fellows of the baser sort gathered a company, set all the city, set all the city in an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason. So these are the charges. This is why they went out from us. Mm -hmm. Founded upon what I'm getting ready to read in the shadow of the cross. So those of you who watches us, you can have an understanding of what I'm teaching. Remember, I'm using Acts 17 and 5. But the Jews which believe not moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company, set all the city, good God Almighty, on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason. I just got that this morning before I was coming out the door. <laughs> God gave it to me just like that. Because it's time for this to be addressed. I'm on page number 60. <clears throat> it says, Timothy was preoccupied, waiting for Van and Mama Rhonda to find him. Page 60. I'm on page 60. Give me your book. It's right there, St. Timothy. On page 60, St. Timothy. Okay? Get lost. Tell y'all to use y'all finger. Shires don't move as fast as mine. Just simple as that. So I want you to pay. You got, you got your book, J.D.? No. No? Oh. Y'all are supposed to have these books in your bag, church. Okay. What's going on? Okay. Okay. Y'all are supposed to have these books in your bags, church. Okay. Timothy mm -hmm. was preoccupied with their spiritual state. Mm -hmm. He was concerned with their needs. Mm -hmm. Their state took precedence above his own things. It is for such ministers that the church looks today. Mm -hmm. Under this sort of man, she thrives. Attitudes towards one calling into the ministry display themselves in a man's bearing toward the flock of God. Peter instructed, the elders which are among you, I exhort. Feed the flock of God. But then he don't go into all the scripture. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 through 3. Arrogance and an overbearing spirit is never acceptable in elders. So this is the first thing that I was accused of. This is why they went out from us. They say I was arrogant. Well, they don't say I was. They say I am arrogant. And I have an overbearing spirit. This is the first accusation from this book that was charged against me. So y'all can, so you Terry, you can understand what I'm saying. And then you others out there that are watching me, you can understand where I am. Okay. And what I have been accused of. Mm -hmm. They said certain lewd fellows, certain lewd fellows of the baser sort gathered a company. This is exactly what happened to me. And set all the city in an uproar. The city will be this ministry, so you can understand. Yes. And assaulted the house of the preacher. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So the first thing that I was charged of by those certain lewd fellows of the base of sword was that I was arrogant, that I am arrogant, and I have an overbearing spirit. Okay. Popish demeanor, that's Roman Catholicism, so they compared me to the Pope because you can't not just select certain sentences out of this man's story and apply them to me. Popish demeanor reveals pride in the heart. That's what I have been accused of. Almost universally attends positions of authority in the world 
heart. I'm sorry. Popish demeanor. I'm sorry. Pride in the heart. Pompous and tyrannical treatment of subordinates. That's what I've been charged with, Terry Mack. Right, right, Those of you who's watching, this is what right. certain Lou fellows of the base of sort right. gathered a company, set all the city in the uproar, and assaulted the house. Mm -hmm. And so this is another thing that I has I have been accused of and charged with. I start again. Arrogance and an overbearing spirit is never acceptable in elders. Popish demeanor reveals pride in the heart. Pompous and tyrannical treatment. They say that it ty 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 tyranny means to be an absolute ruler, cruelty, and severity. So they say I'm cruel, I'm seeking to be an absolute ruler, cruel, and very, very harsh and severe. Pompous and tyrannical treatment of subordinates almost universally attends positions of authority in the world and in human institutions. Never is such conduct permissible in elders. So they say that I have this conduct. Our chief shepherd has said, you know that princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them, but it shall not be so among you. So they took this passage of scripture and said that I am not to have dominion over them, nor am I to exercise authority over them. I have been accused of this. This is what I have been accused of. So you guys can know what I'm talking. So you guys can know <clears throat> what I'm talking about while I'm preaching. What they need, those who made that accusation against me, what they need is love. What they need is faith. What they need it's a more recovery of spiritual truth. They need divine influence upon the heart with his, the Holy Spirit, reflections and the soul. Amen. Because if they were born again and the Holy Spirit was working in their soul, they would not have done this. What do you want? They said they need repentance. Yes, they do need repentance. You best believe they need repentance. Okay. So these are the things that I've been charged with. And this is the way they say I am right now as I preach to you. They say this is me. Certain lewd fellow and then certain lewd fellows have made these accusations. That's why they left the ministry because of this right here. Again, our chief shepherd is saying you know that the princess of the Gentile, so I've been compared to a Gentile. So they have compared me to a Gentile. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that they have not done it. They don't understand that they have done that. They don't understand that they have not done that. They don't understand that they have done that. Our chief shepherd has said, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. So their, their accusation is that I should not have dominion over them. But it's all out of context of scripture because Jesus is talking to the, to the okay. apostles. Mm -hmm. He's not talking to a flock and apostles because that was between just the apostles. Mm -hmm. That had nothing to do with the sheep. They don't mm -hmm. even have a sheep at this time. Mm -hmm. They're not even, they don't even have a Holy Ghost at this time. Mm -hmm. They don't have a flock. So this was taken out of context of scripture because this was going on this before the crucifixion of Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to understand your Bible. Right. So you cannot take this and apply it mm -hmm. because it's only applied to, to actually it only applied to 11. It don't even apply to the 12 because Judas betrayed him. Mm -hmm. But at the time he made this statement, right. Judas was still among them. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So this right here, Matthew 20, 25, 26, is for the apostles only. Christ and Peter are not addressing hypothetical possibilities nor peculiar attitudes of ancient times. Self-importance and lording it over others is a shameful reality among moderate ministers. So they say, I make myself important. I've been charged with that. I am charged with that right now. They say, I make everything about me. Many young Christians have been seriously injured by the imperious, overbearing, and arrogant, domineering ways of elders. So I have been charged in seriously injuring those that have left this ministry. All of this is what I am charged with. This is the charge they have brought against me. This is, they say, how I am right now. This is why they left the ministry. If they say anything else, they'll lie. Right. We live in an age when rebellion is common right. against all divinely constituted authorities. I don't know if they related that to themselves or not. <laughs> but they might have related that to me too. Because they don't see me as a divinely constituted authority. Constituted right. means established. Mm -hmm. So they don't see me as that. So this is their reason for not being a part of this ministry anymore. Many have no respect for those whom the Holy Ghost has made their overseers. I don't know if they apply that to themselves or not, I don't know. They may have skipped that part. But the where we started reading on page number 60, all the way up until here, they have charged me with all of these things that has been said. Multitudes of local churches are ruled by anarchy. I mean ruined by anarchy. That's called mob rule. Okay. You look at <clears throat> you look at mm -hmm. Acts 17 and 5 again. Yeah. The Jews, which believe not move with him, took unto okay. them certain okay. rude fellows of the baser sort and gathered a company. This is the mob rule. They gathered a company, set all the city on an uproar. That's mob rule. Okay. This just hit me this morning. When I was coming out the door, he said, it's time. And this, and this is the scripture that came to my mind. Certain little fellow. I didn't give you the word Lou. I didn't give the word. Did I give you the definition? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Paneros. Mm -hmm. That's one of the words for evil. Mm -hmm. Anybody know the other two words for evil? Uh, Kakos. Kakos. Then you got the word Kakos. This is man condition. You got the word kakas, and then you got the word sacros. Those are the three words for evil, for man. He's kakas, he's just bad. And sacros means he's rotten. Or he's corrupt. That's your state. That's what you need. That's why you need a moral recovery of spiritual truth. Okay. That's why you need grace, divine okay. flows upon the heart with its reflections in, in life. That's why you need the love of God shed abroad in your heart. And you need the gift of faith, because faith working by love. Those are important words for your salvation. This one is the most important right there. You got to have this right here to please God. Oh, yes. uh, yeah. All of it is deaf to self. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need all of that. Okay. You need all of that too. You need all that too. You need all that to carry your cross. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. The word cross. Charles is worse sorrows. 
Star Wars means if you got self denial, you won't make accusations like I just read. Grace, resurrection, and it's options. Love yeah. and faith would yeah. not cause you to make these accusations yeah. that I'm reading about right now against yeah. your pastor. Yeah. It will not do that. It will not do that. Because one of the things that love does is to suffer long. Mm -hmm. One of the things that love does is suffers for a long time and it never fails. Love is forbearing. Love is forgiving. This don't this love don't cause you to do that. Oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> Amen. Okay. Love does not cause you to do that. Love, love does not come off the cross. Love does not come off the cross. Love never stops denying itself. That's why Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him take up his self-denial. Let him deny himself. Take up his self-denial. And follow me. Okay. Amen. Amen. If any man come out to me, let him arneo my, up arneo my, totally reject and deny himself. Take up his self denial and stay on the cross. Follow me. Amen. You can't do that in human Amen. reason. You can't do that with a carnal mind. Amen. What was displayed was selfishness. And you cannot be a Christian if you're selfish. Because you gotta deny self. Amen. You gotta reject self. You gotta contradict self. If any man will come after me, let him deny our nail mind, or Peter, he used up our nail mind. It's the words. Let him deny self. Deny. Let him deny himself. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. Deny. Is he what is our nail mind? Our nail mind. And his up are nay, oh man. Let him deny himself. This is a total denying of self. I believe that's the one Luke used. 923. Up are they oh man. That means a total denying and rejection of self. Take up his cross. Take up his self-denial. That's what you got to carry. Self-denial. And follow me. That's the cross. The cross is self-denial. That's what the Jew didn't want to do. Jesus died a very shameful and a disrespectful and disgraceful death. And they said, we will not be identified with a man like that. Look at the way he died. That's why when they put the inscription above his name, mm -hmm. King of the Jews, they had it in Latin, okay. Hebrew, and Greek. Okay. When they looked up and they seen King of the Jews over, over, over his crucifixion, they told Pilate, Pilate, take that down. Pilate was said, what I have written, I have written. They did not want to be identified with Jesus on the cross. Okay. That's why you got to have these attributes. Because many people don't want to be identified with Jesus on the cross. To be identified with Jesus on the cross, you have to have shame. You have to have, I'm just putting this over here, putting this dictionary over so I can read you some of the things that you must have in your life in order to be identified with Jesus Christ. One of the things is, one of the things is, reproach. Let me read your reproach. Just stay with me, because we can learn somewhere today. 
We going somewhere today. We talking about the Passover today. We talking about crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Amen. One of the things you got to have is reproach. Reproach means. Reproach means. Reproach means blame. Discredit and disgrace. They say we will not be identified with that disgrace up there on that cross. It means to be disapproved. You got to have that. Somebody got to disapprove you, disapprove of you. Somebody have to blame you. Somebody have to discredit you. And discretion somewhere in your life, you have to have it. You have to have it. Somebody have to see displeasure in you. You got to have it. Amen. If you're a Christian. You got to be a matter of reproach. That's if you're a, a Christian. You got to be seen as being unworthy. And unacceptable. Like Jesus was. He was unworthy. He was unacceptable. He was discredited. He was disgraced. They spit on him. They buffeted him. They mocked him. If you're, if, you, if you're the son of God, you talk about you God, son, come down and save yourself. Come down off the cross. Save yourself. Stop denying yourself. Did you know what it took for him to die on that cross? He had to be himself. Most people don't understand. He was God. He could have called down 12 legions of angels and killed everybody who was standing out there. You remember what he told Moses? He said, Moses, I'm sick of him. He said, get out the way. I'm tired of a Moses. He said, Moses, I killed every one of them. And I will raise you up a nation that will obey you. Moses said, what shall the Egyptians say? Moses was more concerned about the honor of God than himself. Say Moses, I kill every one of them. I'll raise up a nation that will obey you. Moses say, but what will the Egyptians say? They will say that you brought all these people out here in the wilderness just to kill them. Church, the most magnificent the most magnificent, the most awesome display of power and love is self-denial. The father had to deny himself to send his son. The most powerful, awesome, Magnificent and manifestation of love and self denial, church. It's the Father having to deny Himself to send His only begotten Son. What if He the? What if the Father rose, had a got up, and walked off? and left the universe. We went somewhere else and started him another universe. I'm not sending my son for that wicked What if the father had a got up and walked out on his universe and would have started him a universe somewhere else? He could have. Mm -hmm. If he willed, he didn't will it. That would have been self-will. Do y'all understand what pastor is teaching y'all this morning? 
one of the most powerful, the magnificent, and awesome things that you can ever do in your life, Jeremiah, is to deny yourself. Do you hear what I said, J.D.? Amen. That is, that is awesome. And to deny yourself, especially when you don't have to. Actually, it's an honor to deny yourself. It is an honor to deny You best believe it's an honor. Many it's people honor. don't understand that. Right, because they, they look at it as a sign of weakness. Amen. You know, that's, what they, that's exactly what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I'm saying. Amen. And they think they're not walking out on Christ because they left this ministry and they still believe in God in their carnal mind. You cannot bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing. You can't bring a clean act out of an unclean act. You can't bring right out of wrong. Amen. You can't make it right. That's right. The only thing you, only thing you can do, Rose, is deny self. Make you a special and peculiar people. What you say? You know where I'm going. That's what makes you a special and a peculiar people. It's one of the awesome and magnificent things that ever has been displayed yep. oh, hey. in human society, mm. in the universe, in the world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The first one to deny themselves was who? The father. You best believe it, man. man. Wow. That's why the son said, What I see him do, I wish I had a witness. I do the same thing. Amen. Yeah. Oh, God, he love mercy, man. Whoa. And my father denied himself. He said, I'm not going to be just like my father. I'm going to deny myself. That is the manifestation, the magnificence. That is the peculiarity. That is the specialness of the people of God, just like Rose said. What do they do, church? They deny themselves. Mm -hmm. Found a person that don't deny themselves, they selfish. Mm -hmm. Was Abraham selfish? No. no. Mm -hmm. Denied himself and put his son on him. Was David selfish? Mm -hmm. Was David selfish? Yes. yes, David was selfish. He put that woman's husband on the front line. He, he took that man's wife. Was Moses selfish? Yes, Moses yeah. was yeah. selfish. God told him to speak to the rock and he struck it two times. Was Solomon selfish? Oh, yes. Yes. He married strange, many strange wives. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Was Peter selfish? Yeah. Ooh, yes. Yeah. Said I'd never be offended by you. Yeah, Do y'all hear me when I'm preaching to you this morning? Mm -hmm. Amen. It's that selfishness to get up and walk off. That selfishness. I don't care how they dress it up. I don't care how they say it. You, and you can't bring a clean thing mm -hmm. out of an unclean thing. Yes. You can't fix it with the word of God. I'm going to seek to explain to you how they want to take the word of God into a carnal mind and try to clean their act up. They take the word of after they commit a heinous, hurtful, evil, mischief and a wicked act they want to reach into the word of God and mm -hmm. seek to justify that wicked act would have thus said the Lord you don't made it even more evil yes, yes, so an did. unclean animal trying to chew the cud still is an unclean animal be no. quiet you ain't <laughs> <laughs> you ain't been with me you ain't even been with me he don't even know and I got every one of them exactly what he said right there that's what I'm going to oh wow does, does pride play a part in That's what it is. 
And if God would have had pride and walked off from us, let me tell you what, let me show you what would have happened to us if God would have had pride and walked off from us. Mm -hmm. If God would have walked off from us, started another universe, let me show you what would have happened to us. This about to make me cry up here. Go to Malachi chapter 4. People don't understand what they do and what they have done. And I'm showing you why. Yeah. It's time to answer the question. Why did they need to finish? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Malachi chapter 4. Amen. Yeah. I'm preaching on this day. They need to resurrect. They need, they, they need a more recovery of spiritual truth. And that only can come from Jesus because he said, I am the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Malachi rose. Rose, let me show you what happened. Malachi chapter 4. If God would have walked off and left this universe. I mean, Malachi chapter 4, verse number 1. Right, 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 For yeah. behold, the day cometh mm -hmm. that shall burn as an oven. Mm -hmm. And Terry just said it. Okay. All okay. the proud. Okay. Yes, all that do wickedly. They shall be stubborn. Yeah. The day that coming, bro, the day is coming. Yep. It's coming. Yep. The day coming. The day that cometh shall burn them up. Saith the Lord of hosts, not Dennis Rogers. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch. I mean the whole tree gonna burn up. Ain't gonna be no root. That whole corrupt tree. Come back with me. I said that whole corrupt tree. You can put corrupt tree right there. That's a corrupt tree. You can put a corrupt tree right there. I know that's a corrupt tree. Talk back with me. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. All the proud, all that do wickedly shall be stubborn. That's a promise. You can't fix it. You did wickedly, you can't turn out and make it righteous, can you? No. If you do wickedly, can you turn around and make it righteous? Uh -huh. right. No, you right. can't. Right. We had Malachi chapter 4, we had verse number 1. Behold, the day comes right. mm -hmm. that shall burn as an oven. All the proud, yes, all that do wickedly shall be stubborn on the day. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. It is a corrupt tree. Talk back with me. Yes. But unto you that, talk back with me. Fear my name. Fear my name. Right? Yes. We know who those are to fear his name is those that fear the scripture, right? Yes. yes. That's what we read last week, right? Right? Yes. Those who fear his name are those that Fear the word of God. Fear the scripture, right? Yes. We read that last week. Oh, I, we read we read that last week. Hello? Mm -hmm. We read that last week, right? Hello, hello. We read that last week, right? I'm getting my reader. Hello? 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 Orange over there. Remember, we read it. Amen. All right then. Fear my name means to fear the word. Read, JD. That lack of reverence of the word is the ground of Amen. all Amen. disorders that are in the heart, Amen. life, Oof. conversation, yep. and in Christian communion. Read again, JD. That lack of reverence. Lack of reverence of the word for the word of God is the ground. That's the foundation. Of all disorders. All the disorders. That are in the heart, life, conversation, and in Christian community. Christian community is Christian fellowship. Mm -hmm. Read. Besides, that lack or the lack of reverence of the word led men open <laughs> to the fearful displeasures of God. Say it again. Besides, that lack of reverence of the word led men open to the fearful displeasures of God. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the word shall be rewarded. I wish I had a witness. All transgression begins <coughs> at wandering 
from the word of God. Say it again, J.D. All transgression beginneth at wandering from the word of God. I didn't wonder from the word of God. I wonder from him because he was too domineering. I wondered from him because he got an overbearing and arrogant spirit. You still can't bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing. I left that ministry because he was lording it over us and he was making himself important. I'm going to read the same scriptures this morning that I read that they say I used to make myself important. I'm going to read these same scriptures. They have no fear of these scriptures right here. Mm -hmm. These scriptures, that is the word of God, I'm going to read them. They think they can bring a clean thing out of an unclean act. There's no possible way you can do it. Job says it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Amen. That which is crooked you cannot make straight. Amen. That which is crooked cannot be made straight. For behold, the day coming, it shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yes, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. The day coming shall be shall burn them up. Said the Lord of hosts, it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name, that fear my word, that fear the scriptures, that have reverence. Hello? Mm -hmm. Shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, he's going to resurrect. You shall go forth, grow up as calves of the stall. You shall tread down the wicked. They shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do, said the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and the judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Elijah, shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Elijah shall turn the heart of the children to their fathers for fear. I come and smite the earth with a curse. That's what has, would have happened if God had got up and walked away from us. He denied talk back with him. He denied self, didn't he? Yes. Amen. You would have knew nothing about no Marvin Gaye and no temptation. Amen. You would have knew, knew nothing about no James Brown, nor each other, man. You was not lying. It's getting a little warm in here, y'all. Huh? Or is it the word? What if God would have walked away from us? What if he got up and walked away from us because of our overbearing, domineering, and arrogant attitude we had? What if he'd have walked away from us because of our high madness and our fornication and adultery. Amen. Because of our drunkenness. Yes. What if he got up and walked away from us? Who are we to believe mm -hmm. and have the audacity mm. to believe we better than somebody else? Yes. We can get up and leave them because they're not performing. Yes. They are not meeting my expectations. But none of us have met God's expectations. Sure. Amen. Amen. And he has not walked off and left us. Amen. Who are we? Amen. Who do we think we are? Amen. God have mercy on our soul. We don't understand Amen. crucifixion. We don't understand resurrection. We don't understand Jesus. We don't know what the cross means. 
We don't know what the cross means. If any man come after me, turn your Bible to the book of Matthew. Amen. They have not denied themselves. God have mercy on ourselves, church. Matthew chapter 16. Revealed himself to Peter that he is the Christ. We pick it up in Matthew 16, verse 21. Amen. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem, suffer many things of the elders, chief priests, scribes, be killed, and be raised again the third day. He began to show them how he must deny himself. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee to deny yourself. Lord, this shall not be unto you to deny yourself. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan is he who suggests to you not to deny yourself. Satan is the one that suggested to them, Don't deny yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't sit there and let him be arrogant and overbearing and domineering and severe and be a tyrant over you. You don't have to take that if you don't want to. You can use this scripture right here to justify yourself. You can go read this in a book here to declare yourself not guilty and give those who's going to question why you did it or a reason for why you did what you did. A what? I was going to say excuse. That's exactly what it is. That comes from the devil. That was suggestion from the devil. That did not come from God. Amen. Because he told you to do what? Deny yourself. That doesn't do he didn't say deny yourself up to Jesus. Deny yourself up until a certain point too. When you get tired of those elders, Jesus, then you have you have a choice whether you can go to the cross or not. When you get tired of those Pharisees and them laying in wait for you, when you get tired of them tempting you, Jesus, when you get to the point, Jesus, where you can't take it no more. Here's a way out. <laughs> when you get to the point, Jesus, where you can't take it no more. Here's a way out. <laughs> when you get tired of that man and that overbearing, that domineering spirit and him cussing, using wild ass and them words that you don't like, Jesus. You don't have to sit there and be an example for the flock and die for them. What'd you say, Mama Rhonda? Here's a way out. Here's a way out. Go over, go back to the book of Jeremiah, go back to the book of Isaiah. Go find a scripture in, in the book of Deuteronomy and show them why you left. Find a secular book written by Socrates or a secular book written by Aristotle. And you take that, what you find that Aristotle and Socrates have written, and you compare it to him and tell him, isn't he like this? If that ain't the work of Satan, my name ain't this. They need a moral recovery from spiritual truth. They need divine influence upon the heart with its reflections in life. Divine influence upon the heart Divine, divine influence on the heart with his reflections in life is what? 
Except the name. Amen. And their self-denial begins in the what? Begins in the what? In the mind. In the what? The understanding. And the mind and understanding is located in the what? In the soul. So the body don't deny self, the soul denies yes, self. Does. Amen. Yeah. And bring the body up under subjection. Y'all yeah. with me? Amen. 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 I'm going to preach this morning a little bit to you. Yeah. Then Peter, verse 22, took him, began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block unto me. You don't want to what? Deny yourself. So the carnal mind is a what church? Stumbling. Best stumbling. believe it because Peter's in a carnal mind. The carnal mind is a what? Stumbling. The carnal mind is a stumbling block. Amen. 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 What'd you say, J.D.? It's an offense. The carnal mind is an offense. It is. Amen. 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 The carnal man savors not the things that be of God. Self-denial. It savors not. It does not entertain and have an entrance in. It don't have an interest in. The carnal man ain't got no interest in self-denial. But he got an entrance in those things to be of men. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if it's based on a condition, it's conditional. And the conditions are resurrection, grace, love, and faith. If it's conditional, Self-denial, J.D., is founded upon a condition. Yeah. Coming to Christ is founded upon a condition. Right. It's not unconditional. Hmm. It's founded upon conditions that you have to meet. That have to be manifested. And you, your soul, have to partake in this world in order to come and to follow him. you got to have these conditions. Mm -hmm. Say if any man will, if any man will come to me, him do what? Deny, Deny himself. himself. Take up his cross. cross. No. no. His self Take self up his self-denial. Self what would his self-denial be? His carnal mind? <laughs> Take up that carnal mind. Yeah. Don't follow the carnal mind. Follow who? Follow me. Look at your verse. I'm at 16, 24. We ain't got to get lost. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any will come after me, let him or nail my. Deny himself. Take up his self-denial. Mm -hmm. You got to deny his carnal mind. Then you got to carry that carnal mind, right? Mm -hmm. And follow Jesus. Yes. For whosoever will save his carnal mind hmm, shall lose his soul that is up under the power of the what? Carnal mind. That's you better understand that whosoever will lose his carnal, lose his soul up under the power of the carnal mind for what? Amen. For my sake. Yes, sir. You're going to find his soul, lady. Amen. Amen. What is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? There go right there, church. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's about the soul. It's about the soul. It's about his soul. Mm -hmm. That's why I be telling you now you understand the carnal mind up under the soul. Now you got Now you should understand the carnal mind that the soul is up under the power of the carnal mind. Mm -hmm. You got to lose your carnal mind so your soul can be saved, Rose. You got to deny self. I don't know what 
they read. What preachers preach. What teachers teach. I don't see it. I read it again. If any man shall come out to me, if any soul, J.D., you guys be reading this and sometimes y'all don't understand. When you get the scriptures like this right here and you don't understand and I'll tell you a soul, you need to write soul because you don't understand. You don't understand. If any soul, man is not in the text. Man is in the talents. Jesus is not talking about a body. Amen. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Many people don't understand who they is and what they is. It's a soul. It's a soul in me. I am in the body. That's where I'm at. This is not me. What you're looking at? This Rosalie, this Rosalie Butler and Jimmy Lee Rogers. That's who you're looking at right here. This dust of the ground. This ain't been resurrected. This does not have a moral recovery of spiritual truth. There's no divine influence up on this. The divine influence is in me. And me is my soul. Many don't understand and grasp it. Well, you got to be born again. You got to understand that. Got to deny self. Don't you know he had to deny hitting him with a bolt of lightning? Don't you know he had to die uh, uh, from judging them and hurting them and harming them? He had to do that for three and a half years, Rose, and then he had to get on the cross and die for them. The same ones who ridiculed him, the same ones who disgraced him, discredited him, the same ones who spit on him and mocked him. He had to die for him. If any will come after me. Ah, this is what they don't understand, J.D. Him or Naomi reject, disown himself. Reject. The word or Naomi. Disown. Take up his Self-denial. Follow me. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. <laughs> what you say? I see living soul in that scripture. You, in what scripture? Yeah. Um, 1625. You best believe will save his carnal man shall lose it, and whoever will lose his carnal man, for my sake, shall find his living soul. <laughs> you, best, you best believe it. Read it again so they can understand it, Rose. That's why I be telling y'all, do you understand? Read it again, Rose, so they can understand. Read it. For whosoever will save his carnal man shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his carnal man, for my sake, shall find his living soul. You best believe it. Because he have did what, J.D.? He denied self. Yeah, denied self. What is the man profit if he shall gain the whole world? That's why he want to do what? Deny himself. Because he want to gain the world. That's why I read Acts 17 to 5. New fellows, the base of sorts, gather the company together. Gain the whole world. <laughs> That's the world. <laughs> What is the man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange all for a soul? You can't get none in exchange for the soul. Because the soul is what? Preach! <laughs> Good God Almighty. Where he get that from? Psalms. <laughs> but the soul is what, Glenn? Precious. Soul is precious. You can't get none and that belong to God. I love I love these these people that left church. I'm appealing to them again. They truly don't understand what they have done. They don't understand. I keep telling them that it's about the soul. And they left here. They sought to save their lives, didn't they? Yes. Yes, they did. 
We got to go with what the scriptures say. We can't go with what they say and what they think they mean. Amen. They stopped walking away. They walked away from Paul. They walked away from Moses, didn't they? Yes, they did. They better end up like lots of life. There's believe it. <laughs> told him. That's what you bet. He told him. He told him. Remember Lot's wife. He told him. He told him. Remember Lot's wife. He warned him. Remember Lot's wife. Yeah, he did. What is this deep right here, y'all? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his what? With his what? Angels. And he shall reward every man according to his works. Whether he denied himself or whether he did not deny himself. And he mean exactly what he says there. Y'all hear me what I'm saying? Go to Luke chapter 9. Go ahead. Go Verse number 18. Are you there? Amen. It came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him and asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? Then answer, they answering said, John the Baptist. Some say Elias. Others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Peter answering said, The Christ of God. He straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man the thing. What did he tell him to do? Deny themselves. Deny yourself. He training them how to deny self right now, isn't he? Yes. <clears throat> Saying the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be slain and be raised the third day. All he said is, I must what? I got to deny it. The Son of Man must deny himself. Talk back with me. Amen. Regardless how you treat it, J.D., you got to do what, J.D.? Deny J.D., regardless how you're allowed on, you got to what, J.D.? Deny J.D., regardless of how you ridicule, disgrace, scandal, slander, what you got to do, J.D.? Deny what is it they don't understand with them? They have not denied self. Verse number 23, and he said to all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his self-denial sometimes when you get tired. <laughs> because man, if you start thinking evil about me today, and you don't deny yourself today, what you going to do? Think evil about me tomorrow. Sure, yeah. Continue, it's going to continue, continue and continue uh -huh. and continue uh -huh. and continue yeah, and continue I'm going to continue and you ain't going to never see nothing beneficial in your preaching. Because you never did what? Deny yeah, so. You ain't never denied self. You best believe it. Yeah, I so. <laughs> Do y'all understand what I'm showing y'all this morning? No, 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 no. And I pray when I'm called me. No. And ask me, which they ain't gonna do. Because I got too much word for them. Truly they know that. Amen. What you say? And truly they know that. Got too much word for them. It ain't nothing you can gain say against this was written and read. No, you ain't no excuse he gave you for this written and read. Can't come again. You cannot come against you. How are you going to take the scripture and come against this? These are the words from the Father. Yes, sir. This is what I don't understand, and they don't understand what they're doing. If any man will come after me, mm -hmm. let him deny himself. Arnea, this is up, Arnea, man. This means a total contradiction. Mm -hmm. Take up his cross sometimes. Hey. 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 And 
follow me. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake. How do we lose our life for his sake, J.D.? We, we, we live for him. We deny ourselves. We show the attributes and the characteristics of his working in us and receiving the shame, the ignominy, ignominy, the slander, the reproach, the disgrace, the disapproval, the rejection. We deny self. Years ago when you taught this in the house, God you, you made an emphasis of the fact that the first thing he said it was mm -hmm. the absolute first thing, the first requirement to follow him. Deny self. Is to deny self. Got to. Yeah. Ain't no way man can sit here. No way. And I preach to him like this and he don't what? Deny self. Ain't no way JD could be been deny sitting here over 20 years and having what? Deny self. Ain't no way Glenn could be sitting there every week and keep yeah, going through this and he having what? Deny itself. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Ain't no way Cornelia can divorce me. Come back to this ministry. She had and we have self. a relationship like ain't nothing ever happened if she didn't do what? No, I'm so sad. Ain't no way to preach her. I can have a relationship with her if I had not what? No, I'm so sad. Ain't no way Jeremiah can, can have a relationship with me considering what their father has went through so. if they didn't do what? No, I'm I'm so. I Man, I can run out of this yes, thing. <laughs> ain't no way JD can continue to sit there and preach to me. If she hadn't been denying self. And her husband don't love her. Yeah. If she didn't do what? Deny Deny self. Mm. Mm. Y'all tell me that's ain't powerful. Yes, sir. That's what it means when it say it is God which worketh in you. I see it. Now. Both the will and do of his pleasure. What is God's will and good pleasure for your life? Deny self. <laughs> Only God can do it. Oh man. Amen. Again, the first person to deny themselves was the Father in sending the Son. The next person that denied themselves was the Son. Yep. And being obedient to the Father. The third person that denied himself was the Holy Spirit to preach and teach what the Son said. He said he will not speak from himself. He will do what, y'all? Say what I said. So in order for him to say what he said, what do the Holy Spirit got to do? Deny himself. The dog. In order for the Holy Spirit to speak with Jesus, speak the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. He got, got, <laughs> he got to too. Wow, well, shut up, He God. got to. He got to. He got to defer. He got to. But he had to do what? He got to deny himself. He got to. He got to defer. He got what? He got to defer. Yeah. Don't let him change. He got to I just think if he didn't do it, that would really be. We'd been in trouble. Sure. He wouldn't have never been here. He'd have, he'd, have, he'd have smoked earth with a curse. He didn't yeah. do it in the garden. What? He didn't do it in the garden. He could have killed Adam and Eve. What did he do, Rose? He denied himself. He could have killed Adam Whoa. and Eve. And could have made two more people. Yep. Yep. That's why I told you the most awesome and magnificent thing that has ever been done. It's to deny yourself. He could have walked off from the universe, started him a whole new universe somewhere else, raised up him a whole other earth somewhere else. He could have destroyed his earth. He could have. Yeah. What kept him from oh, doing man. it, church? Love. Love. Hey, you show self denial through the flood? What? <laughs> Did he show self denial through the flood? <sighs> But eight souls in that ark. Yes, he did. Yeah, that was so in love. <laughs> he denied himself. He saved eight souls. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how come. 120 years. years. Long yeah. suffering. Mm -hmm. Talk back with me, right. y'all. Amen. Mm -hmm. The most powerful characteristics that you can ever have, the most powerful manifestation that the love of God is shed around in your heart by the Holy Ghost was given to you. That you have been resurrected, you got the moral recovery on the spiritual truth, and you got divine influence upon your heart with his reflections in your life. Is what, man? Denying himself. Self denial. This is a great hero, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Rosary, read. 
read that. Let me finish reading this book. These accusations. <laughs> These are the accusations. I know. It said multitudes of local churches are ruined by anarchy, mob rule. Mm -hmm. Christians must be taught to submit to Christ's order and to its assigned elders and deacons. Mm -hmm. And then he throws in opinion, don't he? Mm -hmm. He says still a church may be as much injured by tyranny as by anarchy. Mm -hmm. That's what they say that is going on in this ministry. I'm an absolute rule, ruler, I'm cruel, and I'm severe. You see, at times, here go his opinion. He goes carnal mind. At times, there come challenges of issues of truth and righteousness, which are vital to the glory of God and the well-being of the flock. It's one thing you don't never do, and that is what? In that sentence, what is you you not supposed to do in that sentence? And that's at times there come challenges to issues of truth and righteousness, which are vital to the glory of God and the well-being of the flock. What is one thing in there you don't do? Challenge, challenge the issues of truth. You never challenge the issues of truth. You challenge the issues of truth. You challenge God. Amen. Amen. You don't challenge truth. I am the way I. You don't challenge whether it's truth or not. That's a you no, best believe it's unbelief. No, 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 no. You don't challenge issues of truth. No, no you don't. You ain't do nothing against the truth. What do you do? Thank you very much. Amen. The pastors must know how to be insistent, demanding, compelling, and attention. You say the pastors. He said the pastor must know how to be insistent in their opposition to immorality and heresy. That means demanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what insistent means. It means mm -hmm. to be compelling. The prophetic voices, mm -hmm. their, their prophetic voices should thunder and their feet hold firm. But all issues of Truth are not so essential. Mm. Thank you, Rose, because I don't know where he got that from. Mm. See, this is why I tell y'all about knowing how to read. He said, but all issues are not so essential. Neither should a severe authoritative stance be the characteristic feature of a pastor's bearing. Yes, it should. Because that's how Jesus was. That's how the father is. So I've been charged with that. I'm too severe. And then we read that over in John 6 where he say, this is a hard saying. We read that already. Mm -hmm. That's right. We read that in Matthew That's 25 right. about severe. I taught a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And we looked up the word harsh. Hard. Go back over there in St. John. This is what people forgot. You don't read it in no secular book and no writing. It says, unless, I taught that in this ministry, didn't I? Yes. Unless you compare it with scripture, don't you? Yes. That's what they said about Jesus. Jesus took, was Jesus severe? Yes. Did he take a stance against them Pharisees, them yes. Sadducees, yes. and them Jews? Yes, he did. Was he flexible? No. Did he bend? No. <laughs> he was? I, I turned to John 10. Go to John 10. I just, I just happened to turn my Bible to John 10. Yes. I'm at John 10, verse number 22. Yes. I'm at John 10, verse 22. Are you there? Yes. It says, And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long doest thou make us to doubt? If you be the Christ, tell us plain. Jesus answered them, I mean, all right, see, y'all say y'all was there. I'm reading. Nobody followed along with me. I stopped and I said, Jesus said unto them, I told you. Thank you very much. Did he just take a stance? Yes, he did. All right, then. Why you keep coming asking me? I told you already. Well, hold on. That ain't good enough for me. I'm going to go over to John chapter 9, J.D. Because uh, I made a statement last week and I told you. If you want to know something about me, come ask me, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm at John chapter 9. I'm at verse number 16. Are you there? Yes. I'm at John chapter yes, 9. 
I'm at John chapter 9. Now I am at verse 11. Okay. He asked, are we there? Yes. yes. He answered and he said, A man that is called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto them, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. It was the Sabbath day when Jesus made clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I wash and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not a God, because he keep not the Sabbath day. He put clay upon people's eyes, and tell people to go wash their eyes, and the people do see. Our fathers told us we ain't supposed to be doing nothing like that on the Sabbath day. That man can't be from God because our mom and daddy say that we ain't supposed to be doing nothing like that. So he can't be from God because he don't do what we say do. Preach, preach. Mm -hmm. He don't operate according to our carnal mind so he can't be from God. <laughs> have Jesus taken a stance oh, yes. when he put that clay on that man's eyes and watched, he told that man to watch and go see did he deny himself yes, yes. yes Jesus yes. did deny yes. himself yes. he sure did deny himself did the man deny himself oh, yeah. yes the man did because he did what Jesus said when you do what Jesus say you deny self he following Jesus he not following tradition no. amen that's my point. He's not following the carnal mind. Mm -hmm. Carnal mind told him not to do it. Right. That's what I want y'all to understand. Understand. Pay attention and see the carnal mind as you go through these scriptures too. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. Y'all understanding should be deep enough and clear enough to see it now. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to point out every aspect of it and viewpoint of it when you read it. Jesus denied himself to keep his father's commandments and not their law. Amen. Understand. Therefore says some of the Pharisees in verse 16. This man is not from God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day according to the commandments of men and the tradition of our fathers. According to the commandments of men and the traditions of our fathers according to Shema and, 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 and Hillel. This man has broken the Sabbath day, right? right? And so they say, how can a man that's in a sinner? So anybody that do, didn't do what Shema mm -hmm. and Hillel said was a what? Sinner. Sinner. Was a sinner. Mm -hmm. Understand and know your Bible. I teach y'all that here. There ain't no time to be playing games. Mm -hmm. Then said some of the Pharisees, this man is not a God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles. And there was a division among them about who? It's a, it's a division among them about what? It's a division among them about who? Jesus. Thank you very much. Some of them hold to him, some of them don't. Mm -hmm. So it's a division. Wherever Jesus is, they're going to be what? Division. You best believe it wherever the word of God is, it's going to be division. I don't care where you go and, and, and the word of God is preached. It's going to be what, J.D.? It's going to be division because of the word, not because of the preacher. There must be. They said to the blind man again, what says you of him? And he said, he opened my eyes. He said, he is a prophet. Is that, is that blind man taking a stance oh, yeah. yes. against immorality? Yes. Yeah, he's taking a stance against immorality, ain't he? Yes. He take a stance against immorality and heresy, ain't he? Yes. But then let's keep seeing and see do this blind man take a stance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm at verse 17. Then said they, then said, they said to the blind man again, what says you of him? Then he had, that he hath opened your eyes. He said he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son whom you say was born blind? How then doeth he now see? His parents asked them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. 
But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. For he is of age. Ask him, he shall speak for himself. That's what I was telling you last week, Terry. It says, but by what means he now see? Can't nobody can tell you by what means I see. Can't nobody can tell you by what means I got my doctrine, by means I got my revelation. They can't tell you what I read, what I studied, what I defined. This is what I was telling you last week. So by what means, by what means I now see? You don't know. They don't know. So don't ask them, ask me. Hello? This is what I was saying last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By what means he say that, man? I don't know, mama. Uh, I don't know, Rhonda. Go ask the preacher. Amen. By what means he now see it? How he see that? Where he get that revelation from? What happened there? You come ask me. Don't ask them. And this is what I was saying last week for those game sales that was watching last week. By what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who have opened his eyes? You don't know who opened my eyes. You don't know if my eyes was open when I was reading uh, J. Fawcett Brown. You don't know if my eyes was reading when I was reading Clark's commentary. You don't know if my eyes was open when I was reading Charles Bridges. You don't know if my eyes was open when I was reading Alfred Adeshine. I was reading some yesterday. My eyes was open. Whoa! And I say, man, I was reading some yesterday, and it's in the book that I'm reading. I'm studying. And I'm reading. I said, man, this is deep. And I'm steady reading, and I'm steady reading. And when I got to one sentence, one individual popped into my mind. And it says, see, I'm reading. And I'm just reading. I'm doing my study. I'm just reading. I'm just reading. I get to one sentence, Terry. And when I get to that one sentence, this individual pops into my mind. So when I get to that one sentence and that individual popped to my mind, everything I don't read previously applies to that individual. Okay. I got a one sentence and that individual came into my mind. When that individual came to my mind, I started reading. When I, when I continued to read, I said, wow, everything I read previously to that individual. God been showing me him all the time I did read it and I didn't know it until I got to a certain sentence. That's so why I tell you, come ask me. Verse 21. By what means he now see it, we know not. They didn't know. For who have opened his eyes, we know not. He is mature. That's what it means. He mature. Ask him. What did it say? He shall speak for himself. Thank you very much. I speak. I don't need no man to speak for me. I'm not. And you go ask no man what I say. Ask me. Amen. This is what they didn't understand what I was saying. I don't need no man to speak for me. Speak for myself. I'm mature. And if they mature, they're going to say, hey, look, go over there and ask him himself. He mature. He can speak for himself. This is what I was telling you yesterday. For you arrogant, overbearing, high-minded Pharisees out there. Because I know you had something to say about it. Because I know you. These words spake his parents. Because they feared the what? Jews. For well, the Jews had all agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be what? Put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, do what? Ask him. Then again called, then again, then y'all pay attention. Then again called they the man that was blind and said to him, Give God the give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. Now I don't know nothing about his life. I don't know nothing about his history. I ain't never seen. I don't know where he was brought up at. I don't know what he done did. <laughs> so you don't agree with a person just because they call a man a sinner? I'm not going to agree with you. He basically told them, you go ask them. <laughs> he basically said, go ask them. Oh, he going to tell them? Well, let's let just keep reading. He going to tell them. 
somebody tell you something about somebody else, you watch that person. You don't listen to that person. No. Amen. All right. You don't listen to nobody tell you nothing about nobody else. It's all through scripture. But what's wrong with them? They blind. They can't see. They can't see. And they won't do what? Deny themselves. Thank you. Then again, call. I'm at verse 24. Then again, they call the man that was blind. They just don't get it, do they? No. They don't want to what? Believe, do they? No. Said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. They hate Jesus, don't they? Yes. They literally hate him. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or not. See, that's what I'm talking about. Don't agree with him. When somebody come tell him, he a sinner. Let me tell you what he did. And they tell you everything I did and you agree with him. Instead of coming asking me. That's another reason I'm, I'm reading this. So they could come ask me. Nobody ain't going to have to worry about it no more. This is the accusations they have made against me. I can speak for myself. You don't agree with nobody because they disagree with somebody else. The Pharisees say Jesus is a sinner. The man say, hey, I don't know nothing about that. All I know is that he preached the word of God to me and I can see now. That's all I know. I know he preached the word of God. And when he preached that word of God, something happens to me. I can see in the scripture. Now I don't know nothing about what he did in the past. But one thing I know, I didn't understand the scriptures like I understand them now. Now I don't know what he said about you and what y'all, what happened with y'all back in 2019, 2018, 2016. I don't know nothing about that. I know that right now, I can what? See. See. I don't know what y'all relationship was back there before I met him. That's what she said. That's how you get gossip and tell Baron going on. Yes, she didn't like it. Exactly. Excuse me, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know nothing about that. I wasn't here. But, but, but just let me tell you now, I'm going to tell you now, this is how he is. I, I, don't, I don't care nothing about that. Mm -hmm. I know right now I'm here for the word of God, I'm receiving the word of God, and the way he preaching and teaching me, my understanding is growing. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is so good, yeah. Now, whether this man be a sinner or not, I don't know. Come back with him. Amen. <laughs> Y'all don't know him like I know him. I don't know where you may be fine. I don't. <laughs> you don't sound like he seeks to save his life, though. Huh? <laughs> he ain't seek to save his life, though. I think he denied himself, ain't he? Yes, he did. I think he don't yes, took he a stance against immorality and heresy, too, ain't he? He don't took a stance, ain't he? I don't care how many times they keep coming back to him, he stand on He stand on He firm, ain't he? He on that rock, ain't he? They can ask him a hundred times. He's still goes, hey man, look, he a prophet, man. Hey man, I don't know if he's a sinner now. Hey man, he opened my eyes now. I don't know what your relationship is with him in the past, but hey, right now? I can see. <laughs> I, I, I know. The best thing going for me. What? I got the best thing going for me. Right now? Right now. Now I don't know what your relationship was with him, mm -hmm. but now? I can see. I can see. That's why I can't understand those last, those last ones that got up and walked away with him. They accuse him of being a sinner. They accuse that lewd fellow of being a sinner before. But they said now, oh, 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 I see what you're saying now since you don't show me that in that book. Preach. He did. He was made aware of it. Go ahead. You have help their family survive. Mm -hmm. You have did so many other things for them. Mm -hmm. But now they see what the new fellow saying. Amen. Right. Uh -huh. I'm glad you said I did. It's a benefit. I'm glad. For <laughs> their family. That great Karen is gone. <laughs> I'm glad you said it and I didn't. They accused me of that too. <laughs> I woke up this morning. This is yeah. what he hit me with. Right. I woke up this morning, Jeremiah. This is what he hit me with. 
certain new fellas gather the company together, started an uproar in the house. Therefore said his parents, verse number 23, he is of age, ask him. Then again called, they the man that was blind and said unto him, they keep trying to convince him, don't they? Yes. Like they seducing him, ain't they? Like yeah. Paneros, the Paneros man tries to influence. Yes, sir. And take you with him. Yes, sir. They keep trying to do it. They keep trying to pull him to the side. Yeah. To the God. They keep doing yeah. it. Yeah. Like they did, sir. And when you, and when you be quiet, <laughs> <laughs> she gone, boy. Sorry. She got that revelation, boy. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you to shut up, say it. And, and, and they keep trying to convince they keep trying to convince that person that Jesus is a sinner. And when you're weak-minded and you're blind and you can't see, you can be convinced, can't you? Yeah. The man can see. What'd you say, Charles? That's the effect. That's the effect. That's the effect. Evil in effect. These men of Panera, they trying to pull a man. Yeah. yeah. They, try to, they keep coming to him, don't they? Yes. Don't y'all say they keep coming to him? Yes, they keep coming, don't they? Yes. Keep coming, don't they? Yes. Keep coming, don't they? It's all in opposition to grace, love, resurrection. It's in opposition to all of it. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. This is why these stories is good. You can see this, these the characteristics, the characteristics and attributes of a lewd man, of a polneros that's hurtful. And they try to hurt Jesus, ain't they? Yeah. They full of hurt. Yeah. Try to show they so got so much mischief in there. They try to make him look bad, ain't they? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. They really don't want to know the answers to the question they keep asking. Because in verse twenty-four, they made their stance. They want to have information to confirm what they believe about Amen. Jesus. Amen. Their bias. Amen. Come on, man. It's just like the See y'all preach it again. <laughs> it's just like it was back there then. It was all about Jesus. Yeah. And they don't know like now it's about Jesus. You best believe it. That's yeah. right. It's right about now. Jesus. I think it was a, they were intimidated because they, they didn't have the power or the control anymore. Preach! Mm -hmm. and they don't want to be up under nobody's authority. You are oh, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. They didn't have no more power. They didn't have no more control no more. If I go to never hold those ministry, I ain't got no power. I ain't got no control. Amen, Terry. So I'm going to see him as overbearing. I'm going to see him as arrogant. I'm going to see him as domineering. I'm going to see him as cruel. I'm going to see him as severe. Then again, called. Then again, called. They the man was. Then again, called. They that man that was blind and said to him, Give God praise. He already did. He said a man is a prophet. Uh -huh. We know that this man is a sinner. <laughs> they say we know who he is. We're trying to tell you. What, what, what to say? We're trying to tell, We're trying to tell you. you you're not listening to us. Look, we know. Get us, give praise to God. He don't get no glory. He don't get no honor. You don't have to obey him. It's crazy. Sound the same thing that happened here. Yes. Yes. So I asked God, God, am I wrong in comparing what happened to Jesus, what's happening to me now? Am I wrong? He said, no, sir, you're not wrong, son. It's supposed to happen to you just like it happened to me. That's how you know you went away. Amen. 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 So they say, you don't know him. I've been sitting there 20 years. You don't know him. Yeah. I've been sitting there 15 years. I know him. You don't know him. I'm trying to tell you who he is. No, come ask me. Amen. There you go. And I can show you them, can't I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now let me show you them. How rebellious they have been since I have known them. Let me tell your story. Let me tell you the story of them. When Jesus got tired of them, he got to the 23rd chapter, he told the stories of the Pharisees. Didn't he? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And sinners don't make nobody. He holds them back. What'd you say, J.D.? He holds them back. He did not hold nothing back when he got to the 23rd. Now let me give you the rundown on these Pharisees. Preach, preach. Jesus did that. 
What'd you say? Jesus did that. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you come ask me, I'll give you the rundown on it. I'll give you the rundown. I'll tell you the whole story. Yep. From beginning to me. That's what they say, right? Mm -hmm. We know that we know this man is a sinner. Yeah. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or not, mm -hmm. I know not. They say, you don't agree, J.D.? Because uh -huh. somebody calls somebody a sinner, you don't agree, J.D.? No. Yeah. You don't have no evidence, do you? No. You got no proof, do you? No. no. All you do is got somebody else saying something about somebody else. That's right. all you got. All you got is somebody saying yeah. some, something about somebody else. All you got is somebody saying something about somebody else. We know he'll settle. We've been in the ministry for 20 years. You don't know him like I do. We came here with somebody saying things about you, Pastor. That's all right, Mama. They've been saying things yeah. about me since the inception of the ministry, ain't they, J.D.? Yeah. How many excuse me, ain't they, Cornelia? Yeah. <laughs> How many excuse me, ain't they, J.D.? Mm -hmm. How many excuse me, ain't they, Glenn? Yeah. <laughs> How many excuse me, ain't they, Jeremiah? Yeah. Since you've been able to know good, I mean, knowledge, from, knowledge uh, since you have had the Understanding and the knowledge of good and evil. Hello, Charles. Amen. Hello, Rose. Good. We know that this man is a sinner. <laughs> <laughs> he answered and said, I love this blind man. Uh, I do. A blind man that can see truth. Yes, I don't know nothing about that. They say, we know him. You don't. The blind man said, whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Now what he did in the past, I don't care. I got what I want. What I've been desiring all my life. All my life I've been wanting to know what the Word of God says. Now I'm over here, man, I'm getting a good explanation and understanding of the Word of God. So I don't know what he did in the past. Man, don't care. Preach. Preach. And they sound really foolish calling Jesus a sinner. Because most sinners wouldn't even think about trying to give you no sight uh, like that. Uh, this was this what? Because they sinning all the time. They yeah. interested in doing good. What'd you say, Rose? Twenty two say the words mm -hmm. spake his parents because they feared the Jews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the Jews at that time, mm -hmm. in their eyes, what? knew more than what they knew. Right? Well, knew more than what? Who knew? The, the parents, parents, the blind man, and that that's what they think. That yeah. they know more than yeah. them, right? Yeah. So they trying to tell them like, we know because we know the law, we yeah. practice the law, we yeah. know more than what yeah. you know. Right. So we telling you that he's a sinner. Right. But his faith, this blind man's what, faith, is, is, is more, his faith, because he believed it's more stronger than what the Jews believe that they know. Amen. Because he keep telling them, I don't care what y'all talking about, I know I can see. Amen. But at that time, the Pharisees feel like they're more above him. That's right. Because of the laws, what they practice, what they believe. That's right. But his faith, just that faith. That's right. He must see that he is. That's right. Because he can see. Amen. He's stronger than what they believe. Well, stronger than the knowledge that they had. They knowledge. They knowledge was puffed up, but he had true knowledge. He you best faith. believe it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Because yeah. can't nobody do what to him. Rose just said, can't nobody persuade him. Can't nobody move him. No. He keep telling them, oh, I see, man. I don't care what y'all say. So all that they, they laws and everything that they had. He didn't he care nothing about the Pharisees that. Pharisees before he could see. Amen. <laughs> this grew of the Pharisees before he could see that made none to him. You best believe time. it. That's deep. Yes, it is deep. Amen. That's what I, that's why I keep that's telling you. That's what they tried to do. Oh, we've been there longer, so we Yes, sir. Them. Yeah, we've been there longer, so you don't understand them. You don't know them like us. Amen. See, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Supposed to turn around and say, hey, look, let me tell you something. I know that I was blind. I didn't understand. I know all the understanding of the word of God that I got, I got from him. Now, I don't know what your relationship was with him before I came. Wow. But I know I Before I came back. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Mm. You got to watch people all the time. Somebody come in here, they want to tell them about me. He a sinner. Yeah. Watch, you'll find out when he rebuked you. <laughs> what you want, Neil? So why they gonna tell them about they think? Amen. <laughs> because they want to do what? 
carry control and have authority. You know, I was always wondering with this scripture, why is it that the, uh, the priest never could see the blind man? I mean, he's out there every day, every day, and you go and pass him. How would you not? If that just goes to show you how arrogant they were. You best they, believe it. They, they, they never saw him out no. there. No, they did. They, they, they said he. The reason they didn't want to be bothered with him because they say he was a sinner. Mm. You say your mom and daddy did something, either you did something, so God don't curse you with blindness, you a sinner. We don't have nothing to do with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verse 25, he answered and said to them, whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. One thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. <laughs> That's deep. You like that, don't you? <laughs> They got so much faith right there, man. That's, that's amazing. They won't let up. This is the consistency of a Panero's man. Look at him. Then said they to him again, God, how many times you going to ask him? We could go, go back and we could count the times that they kept asking. <laughs> then said they to him again, what did he... <laughs> <laughs> they think he's gonna change his mind. They seek to persuade and convince him. What did he to you? How open he your eyes? Uh oh. I think you're a little ticked off right now. Uh -huh. He answered them. I told you <laughs> already. <laughs> and what did he say? And you did not hear. Thank you very much. And they didn't hear. And they didn't hear. Say so you did not hear. <laughs> they heard him. Uh -huh. What is it they wouldn't do? Deny themselves. Amen. Amen. They didn't deny themselves. They refused to deny themselves. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Yeah. Amen, fans with Bill. You don't deny yourself. They refused to deny themselves. He kept telling. Them. Kept telling. Them. He's sick of them now. <laughs> I said, I have told you already. <laughs> Watch this. Mm -hmm. You did not hear. Mm -hmm. Wherefore would why do you want to hear it again? <laughs> and then he really he yeah, pissed him off now. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. <laughs> Will you also be his disciple? <laughs> <laughs> Just slapped them in the mouth. Yes, <laughs> Boy, then they did what? Disgraced him. Yes, sir. Reproached him. Discredited him. Disapproved of him. Railed on him. Reviled him. Scandalized him. Because he wouldn't agree with him. Because he would not deny Christ. And they let him have it, didn't they? Yes, sir. Then they reviled him and said, you are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. And he told them they didn't know to him. <laughs> he had already told them. That. The man answered and said to them, why ran is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened my eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if a man be a worshiper of what? God. And doeth his will, him, him God heareth. A man that is a worshiper of God and doeth his will is God. what kind of worshiper? True. true, true. You need to put true right there because it don't say true. Because to be a worshiper of God, you got to do his will. Yes, sir. And what is his will for your life? Self-denying. Self you're not denying self, you're not doing the will of God. Hello? Yeah. Wherever you find the word of God, there's going to be a, dis a, a, a division, a schism. Mm -hmm. going to be a Disagreement. So you can know who the true worshipers are and who are just worshipers. So you got that? Mm -hmm. Say, since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that is born blind? 
that speaks of a soul, doesn't it? Yes. But the soul is born blind. Mm -hmm. The soul is born blind. Amen. If this man were not from God, he could do what? Nothing. They answered and said unto him, You was altogether born in sins. Because he was what? Blind. Because he was blind. And do you teach us? Mm. See? And what did they do? Cast your mouth. So you got to go. Yep. You out of here. The synagogue. Yes, they did. Yeah, they cast him out. Put him out from among them. They don't want to be bothered with him no more. Because they want to see Jesus like they want him to see Jesus. And that's what those do. You pick on the weak. So they can see the preacher the way they see the preacher. See, this is how I see him. Uh -huh. I see him as overbearing, arrogant, domineering, absolute, cruel, cruelty, he's severe, he thinks he's important, that's how I see him. Mm -hmm. So they want everybody else to see me that way. Mm -hmm. I'm at page number 61 because I got to keep going. Okay. All right, we stop that. At times there, are, there come challenges to issues of truth and righteousness which are vital to the glory of God and the well-being of the flock. Then pastors must know how to be demanding and insisting in their opposition to immorality and heresy. Their prophetic voices should thunder and let and their feet hold firm. But all issues are not so necessary. Yes, they are. Nothing should, neither should a severe authoritative stance be the characteristic feature of a pastor's bearing. Yes, it should. Some have imagined that the biblical commands to which sheep submit Congregations should be coerced into non resistant to the pastor's opinions and decisions. No, that is wrong. You don't, you don't go according to the pastor's opinions and decisions. And this is another thing they claim that I am guilty of, that I try to force them to go according to my opinion and my decision of the Word of God that is revealed to me when I'm preaching and teaching. Just like in the case where I just read, and I was giving you revelation and explaining to you what was going on with the blind man. They will say, no, I don't see it like that. That's your opinion. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to believe the way you interpret it and explain it if we don't want to. Yeah. You just went against the Holy Spirit and God. And they don't understand that. So they have accused me of being forceful and trying to make them go according to my opinion. That's why we had one of them certain lewd fellows. I told him, I said, go get your laptop that I gave you. Go sit down, parse the word, and come back and tell me what you see. Or you and I can sit down together. So he didn't want to sit down with me because he got in this man if he sit down with me. He's going to have to receive my opinion and decision of a meaning of a word. Ain't that the stupidest thing in the world? Yes. If you sit down with me, <laughs> it is. That's how he thinks. If you sit down with me and we look up the word reproach, both of us got to agree that that is the definition that's in Merriam Webster's College Dictionary. That's not my opinion and my decision. But they believe it's my opinion and my decision because I showed them the word. Mm -hmm. So they say, that's your opinion and your decision because I showed them the word. I didn't write the meaning. You dumb bell. You didn't write the book. You did some kind of magical act and change the definition. What's the name? What? what? I was trying to think of that uh, Greek word. Imbecile. Imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> Some have imagined. Mm -hmm. With biblical, they imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah, man. Right back. Mm -hmm. With biblical right. commands to which the sheep submit, congregations could be forced into non resistance to the pastor's opinion and decision. Zeal for truth and righteousness mixes with that inflated self-esteem. This is his opinion. Mm -hmm. And so they took his opinion and they say, see, 
That's Dennis right there. These are all the accusations that I'm reading. And I'm going to point them out to you when I get to them. Mm -hmm. That those that went out from among us have made against me. That's why they're not here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Zeal for truth and righteousness mixes with an inflated self-esteem. So they say, I got truth and I got righteousness. Mm -hmm. But it's mixed with inflated self-esteem because I got a highly es es estimate. And I want them to esteem me very highly. So they say I have self-esteem. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, am I wrong? What? Is it saying zeal for truth and righteousness mixed with pride? Yep. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Inflated self-esteem is pride. Mm. Other men are not led by example but suppressed by the worst of worldly tactics. So whether they understand what that meant or not, they say that's what I use. Worldly tactics for my opinion and my decision. Whether they understand what they're saying or what this is saying or not, that's what they're saying. Disagreement and questioning are rigorously stamped out. You're not going to disagree with me and you're not going to question the truth that I preach. But they didn't understand this. So they took it and said, if you disagree with him and question him, you in a carnal mind. You is in a carnal mind if you disagree with the spiritual interpretation of the scripture. Mm -hmm. If you could disagree with divine influence upon my understanding and my mind with his reflections in my life and soul, which is self-denial, you is. You, you it, it ills will be rigorously stamped out. You ills in a carnal mind because you disagree and questioning the word of God and the definition that I'm giving you and the culture and all the other things I use to give you the meaning of the word of God. So they say if you disagree and question him, the first thing he say is you are in a carnal mind. You are because you disagree and you in opposition. It's not like you ask a question and say, it's not like you ask a question and say, what is that Greek word, that word? And then I say, imbecile. Right. It's not speaking of like that. It's speaking of what I went through with that certain Lou fellow in John chapter 8. Which that's the next thing I'm going to do. It's coming, y'all. I can just tell you that right now. Maybe it'll come after this. But this is need to be addressed so those out there can know what I'm preaching about when I go to those verses in 1 John 2.19 and Jude 1.9 when I'm talking about they went out from us and uh, they uh, separated from us. They didn't deny themselves. That's why they separated from us. I mean, it's just, it's clear. It's so easy to understand. And they keep saying we didn't lead a ministry. Yeah. We didn't we we didn't left that ministry. We didn't leave God. That's not biblical interpretation, according to John, First John, according to First John in Hebrews three and ten. I don't care what no other preacher says. Tell him to call me, and I teach him. Amen. Because a certain preacher told him. They did told me they didn't leave God. They left the ministry. Who initiated the ministry? <laughs> he has given us this ministry. He has given. That God Almighty, what you don't understand? So a certain preacher or claim to be, told them, y'all did not leave God, told me. They did not, told me. They did not leave God. They just left, quote, your ministry. Wow. Was that a slap in the face? Yes, it was. Was that a slap in the mouth? Yes, it was. Was that a slap in the mouth? Yes, it was. As a teacher, he should have deferred them back to their teacher. Oh, 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 oh
They left your ministry and came to my ministry. <coughs> but they that left here say that the ministry is not mine, it's God's. So how do they go to his? Carnal mind. You best believe it. Disagreement and questioning. You don't disagree, disagree and question truth. Uh, they dis excuse me. And John 9, all the Pharisees and the Jews disagreeing and questioning. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. God Almighty. They disagreeing and questioning, aren't they? Yes. Huh? Yes. They disagree with them, then they ask them a question, don't they? Yes. They disagree with them, then they ask them a question, don't they? Yes. They just they did yes. go through it. They disagree with them, then they ask them a question. Yes. They want the man to give, they want the man to give his opinion. They want the man to make a decision. And he will not. That's a world of tactic, What'd you say? That's a world of tactic, brother. Well, it is. Yeah. That's what they're practicing in John 9 is those worldly tactics. Yes, man. And they do that today. Did this did this blind man stamp out disagreeing and 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 questioning? Yes. Mm -hmm. He nailed it when he said in verse 27, he answered them, I have told you already. You did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? How many times have I said that? You don't hear. You're not hearing me. How many times have I told them that? You keep asking the same question. I say you didn't hear. You didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. And that's the same thing he's telling them. Aren't he? Yes. Yes. Telling them the same thing. Why you keep asking me the same question? You didn't hear me. You keep asking the same question over and over again. I answered a question in 2015. You come in 2017 and ask. I answered the question in 2017. You ask the same question in 2019. I answered the question. You answered the question in 2021. I answer. You answer the same question in 2024. You keep asking the same questions. You didn't hear. Keep asking the same question. We have a disagreement about the same. Why do you think I told y'all to watch the DVD? Mm -hmm. Everybody came back to me and said, you're going through the same thing. You're preaching yes, the same thing over and over. And I am. Because it's disagreement and questioning because they didn't hear. Disagreement and questioning are rigorously stamped out. Yes. When elders become obsessed with the submission of the flock, they say, I'm obsessed with the flock submitting to me. So they say, so when we disagree with him, we can't ask no question, we can't do nothing. He won't let us ask him no question. I've been asking your question since, since you got to the ministry for 20 years. So there's another thing that they have accused me of. They say, when elders become obsessed with the submission of the flock, they say, I am obsessed with the flock submitting to me. That's why I keep reading Hebrews 13, 17, which I'm going to read today. <laughs> they say, see, there he goes again. That's what we mean when we say he is obsessed with the flock submitting to him because he keep reading Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule of, over you and submit yourselves unto them for they watch for your mind. Yes, they watch over your mind. Yes, they do. Over your mind. <laughs> don't want nobody, I don't want you watching over my mind and my understanding. <laughs> And so I've been, I've been accused of, of being obsessed with submission of the flock. Mm -hmm. they, they have a real danger really close to the autocracy of Rome. They say, I'm trying to be the Pope. Then they said that outlook involves an egotism. They say, I'm egotistic. 
and egotism from which ministers must be delivered. So that's another accusation that they made against me. They say I am egotistic, it's all about me. And I have had one certain lewd fellow tell me, you make it all about you. No, I don't make it all about me. The word made it all about the preacher. Yes, it and so when I read those scriptures, it was told me, you always reading those scriptures. Why? Because you haven't learned how to submit yet. <laughs> And it was Amen. the word that was calling them out. That's probably why they couldn't handle it. Amen. Exactly why they couldn't handle it. Because the word was calling them out. And they would not do what, church? Submit. Or what? They did not deny self. They did not deny themselves. They did not deny themselves. Oh, yeah. That's why I say that's the most magnificent and awesome it thing is. that ever you can it do. Is. That's how unprivileged, like, like you said. To be given the ability to deny self. That's attribute and characteristics of God, the Father, because He's the first one. Amen. The Father is the first one that denied Himself. He knew everything His Son was going to go through, He knew how they was going to talk to Him, how they was going to treat Him. But he denied himself and sent them. Thank God that the Father never went out from among us. Thank God that the Father never went out from among us. Thank God that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit never separated themselves from us. Amen. You think I'm not going to take this ridicule? You think I'm not going to take this slander and punishment? You think I'm not going to preach it? I'm going to preach it. I'm not afraid to read this. I know this is the work of the devil, the way they used it. I didn't say this is the work. I didn't say the book is the work of the devil. Say the way those who read it used it against me and this ministry, especially me. Yes. They say, this is me. So God, this morning, decided to address it. You know, point out everything they say that applies to me. Some elders never appreciate the compliment given them. They say they give me compliments and they love me, but I don't appreciate it. <laughs> I like to know when. Mm -hmm. They say some elders never appreciate the compliment given them. When a saint disagrees with the pastor's exposition of the text. If a saint disagrees with the exposition that a pastor given of a text, he shouldn't be pastoring. If, was, if you disagree with the exposition that I give from a text of scripture, I shouldn't be up here pastoring. Because my exposition is supposed to come from divine influence. Amen. 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 If you disagree with the exposition that I give from a passage of scripture, that means I ain't got no business pastoring. I mean, I ain't got, I haven't studied. Because the Bible told me study to show yourself approved. I mean, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth. It said those that labor in the word, they are counted worthy of double honor. My Bible tells me so. If a pastor stood up to give exposition of a passage of scripture and he don't understand in the congregation, disapprove of, then he don't know what he's preaching. Turn your Bible to the book of Timothy. Turn your Bible to the book of Timothy. Turn your Bible to the book of Timothy. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I'm at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 10. Are you there? Yes. Are you there? Yes. It said, for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. Because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise your youth, but be you an example of the believers in word. In word. That's the first thing you got to be an example of. So if he give an exposition of a scripture, and, and, and a saint 
come along and disagree with it. He having been a good example in word. He don't know what he's talking about. In conversation, mm -hmm. in charity, mm -hmm. in spirit, in faith, in purity. I'm going to read this very slow. Till I come, give attentive to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. So if you come to me and you tell me that exposition that you gave of that text is wrong, I don't agree with it. This is what I think it means. I haven't did what? Look at the scripture. I haven't gave attendance to read it. I wish I had a witness. Come tell me my text is wrong. The exposition I gave of a text is wrong. That means I have I have been disobedient. Uh -huh. And did they search the scriptures mm -mm. to see what No, was no. True? no, no, and oh no, and oh no, and oh no. Mm -hmm. no they don't understand, and so they believe. So he, so the, so that certain little fellow believed because Walter Chantry wrote that in his book. And that happened between me and them, that that applies to me. Mm -hmm. That I don't appreciate them and the compliment they gave me. Come and teaching me something. <laughs> Amen. We all understand. Yeah, and we ain't through. Because if they come, if you listen to very carefully, if I give you an exposition of a text and you disagree with me, you come tell me that. I gave you the wrong exposition. Y'all remember that. Watch what this says. Verse number 14 says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery or the elders. That means I have neglected the gift, heaven. Uh -huh. We're not through yet. Meditate upon these things. Uh-oh, that means I haven't been meditating, right? Right. It says, give yourself completely to them. I have neglected the gift. I have not studied the doctrine. I have not given myself completely to them, right? Right. It says that your property may appear to all. Mm -hmm. Then here go the scripture right here. Take heed to yourself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you shall both save yourself and them that hear you, Timothy. So, if a saint disagrees with the pastor's exposition of the text, that pastor can't save them, can he? No, he can't. No, he can't. They're saving the pastor. Yes, he is. <laughs> and as she said, did they search the scriptures? No. No, no. no they ain't search no scriptures. They just said, I got him. This is another accusation they made. Mm -hmm. At least the Christian under his care is devoted more to scripture. He ain't got no business up there doing. No, no. No. He ain't got no business. If you devoted more to scripture than me, I ain't got no business up there. You need to man. I ain't got no business up there. And who are they to say who God ordained? You ask them, uh, Pharisees. See, all of this is Baptist doctrine. Because if they are more devoted to the scripture than I am, God would have never sent them here. Amen. This is what they say. I'm more devoted to scripture than he is. And everything they know they learned from me. At least the Christian under his care is devoted more to scripture than to the man in the pulpit. That man ain't got no business in no pulpit. Right. Well, he ain't got no business in no pulpit. If Glenn, if J.D., or Charles, if any one of them that left here was more devoted to scripture than me, I ain't got no business preaching. Because the Bible says what about scripture? What the Bible says about scripture? About what you say? It's given. Amen. Second Timothy three sixteen. 
316. Negative 316. Read, J.D. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It didn't say a saint and a devoted Christian. It said a man from God. Mm -hmm. From God. If they know more scripture than me and more devoted to scripture than me, I'm not the man from God. Amen. 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 And that's the whole premise. If you're sitting here in the first place, so if that's the case, then why are you here? Under his ministry, the child of God has reached a maturity. And that's what they say. They are more mature than the preacher. Mm -hmm. They say they are more mature than me. I can see myself now, man. <laughs> What'd you say? I should see something now. Then. If ain't, you ain't lying, I'll just, if you more and mature love, than me. In love and mercy. <laughs> well, amen. Right if you more mature than me in, in scripture, you should have more self-denial. Yes. You if you got more maturity, you should have more self-denial. If you got more devotion to scripture, you should have more self -denial. Then not your than me. Yep. Amen. Yep. And we should be able to see it. You should be. You should have been able to hear. You sit here and go through all that to be an example for the fly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. no. You should have been able to sit here mm -hmm. and not move and be an example for the fly. Mm -hmm. If you're more devoted to Scripture and you're more mature than the preacher, you should have the ability. To stay in your given place, time, state, and expectancy. You should have been able to may know. Self-seekers can't do Preach. 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 Self-seekers cannot do it. You are 100% right. So if you're more mature, you should be more devoted yes, to Christ. Yes, yes. You should be like the blind man. Oh, yes. That, that's the blind man. Wouldn't get off right the there. cross. <laughs> huh? You wouldn't get off the cross. You best believe it. You should have stayed on the cross. You should have kept carrying your self-denial. Yes. You should have kept carrying your self-denial daily. He had reached a maturity to think through issues for himself. He don't need nobody to think for him. He said, I can think through these issues myself. Turn your Bible to Galatians chapter 6. This is sad. Go to Galatians chapter 6. This is, this is sad. He can think through issues. Right. He ain't say the word of God, church. They don't understand the issues he's talking about is of the world. Mm -hmm. World. Mm -hmm. He ain't talking, he didn't say he can think through the word, did he? Mm -hmm. He didn't say he can think through the word, did he? Mm -hmm. Read. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 3. What does it say? For if any man think himself. Say it again. For if any man think himself. Say it again. For if any man think himself oh, okay. to be something. Okay. When he is nothing. Uh-huh. He deceived himself. Thank you very much. If any man think himself to be something when he is. When he is. When he is. At the time he is. He said, and has and be of the Berean, a Berean spirit. He said, but some ministers cannot endure the process of maturing in the sheep. So they said that I want them to remain babes all the time. Mm -hmm. I cannot endure and put up with them maturing. Mm -hmm. well, if they was mature, they'd be sitting where J.D. sitting there. Right here, amen. At times, then you go into that time, parents are so flattered by the dependence of children that they cannot bear to see them grow up independent with passing years. This is what I've been accused of. 
it says a swollen image of self-importance. They say, that's what I got. And I want them to stay up under me, and I want them to have the authority over me so they can always depend on me. That's what I've been accused of. They say I got a swollen image. That is, again, that is what, Rose? Swollen image. What is that, Rose? Pride. They go pride again. He just used the different words. Okay. Suffers too much for them to relinquish their ways. They say, I won't let y'all go. Mm -hmm. Well, it's even so you. with domineering ministers. That's what they say. I'm a domineering minister. Mm -hmm. That whole paragraph is carnal matter. Of course it's carnal matter. You don't see yeah. no love there. No, you don't see no love there. Self-inflated leaders. That's called what? Right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. just, they just using, mm -hmm. He just using different words because he's an American English preacher. So they, you can't use the word over and over again. They say that's redundant. Mm -hmm. So he's using a bunch of synonyms. Self-inflated leaders of God's flock <coughs> poke their nose into a Christian's personal business. That's what they say. That, that's another thing they accuse me of. They accuse me of poking my nose in where it should not have been. That's what they say. <coughs> he always getting into somebody's business. That's another thing I've been accused of. They didn't say we went and told him and, that, and asked him for counsel. Mm -hmm. They didn't say we went to him and told him that we got business that we fell in there and I ain't going into it. But uh, that's another thing I've been accused of. Go ahead, Mama. Uh, I was going to say that that's like saying that Jesus was wrong because he always asked them, what can I do for you? Oh, he did? Uh -huh. Oh, he and poked so, his nose so, into their so bed? So, so if he's asking them, what can he do for them, they automatically telling them what their problem oh, okay. is. Oh, oh that, that's how that go? Yeah. Okay. I, I, believe yeah, the blind, I believe the blind man being blind was his personal yeah, like, business. Like, <laughs> so, like, you know, I believe that blind man being blind mm -hmm. since his birth was his personal so business. So they say, I, I get into personal business into their financial situation, into their sex life, mm, uh, how they pay their bills, that's what they call their personal business. <laughs> and they say I shouldn't be in that. If, if, that, they, they, that, that they, if they want to commit adultery and fornication and go right. gambling and drink and buy right. drugs, that's their personal business, that ain't none of my business. That's what they say. They had to tell you in yeah. order for you to know about. Oh no, God had to tell me. Yes. And then what is the whole purpose of having a pastor if he can't tell you the truth? They don't need no pastor. And, and, and the whole purpose of the change. <laughs> because I, I had that problem with a neighbor. She wanted to still sin and then say I still belong to the Lord. And I'm like, are you serious? All right, so they say, here's, they say I am a self-inflated leader. This is for those to know who watch us so they can understand from this point on. Mm -hmm how I'm preaching. Yeah. Because they don't know how I'm preaching. They don't know why I'm preaching like I am. And this is why. Mm -hmm. They say that I'm a self-inflated leader over God's flock. They say that this is not my flock. They say they are the flock of God. And I have said it, that this is my flock, but it's not as God's flock. It's God's flock. Mm -hmm. So they say I'm wrong right there. And I poke my nose in the Christian's <laughs> personal business. <laughs> not ask. I just knock on your door. And I get in your business. How your wife doing? How your children doing? Is everything all right in your home? They call that poking my nose in their business. Okay. Beyond all reasonable bounds. Beyond reasonable bounds of decency and prudence. I made a statement and one of them threw it back in my face that I told uh, a couple of women in this ministry that they did not have to sleep with their husbands if they stand out all night and they don't know where they at. Yes, I would tell them that again. Mm -hmm. And he said, and the individual said, I said, they should not lay down with those bastards and I meant that. <laughs> Because a bastard is one that is not a child of God. Right. And if a husband Amen. is staying out all night on his wife, mm -hmm. that bastard, I wouldn't lay down with him. I know. 
came yeah. from the dog. What you say? Lay down when, with a dog. And you get up with fleas. <laughs> <laughs> they have broken God's commandment. They have not showed preeminence, Amen. strength, Amen. intellectual power, Amen. and wisdom. Nope. You stand out on your wife all night long and expect that woman to lay down in the bed with you and have sex, <laughs> I do not advise that. Amen. I would not lay down with that bastard. Okay. And so I said that in one of my teachings, mm -hmm. and I have been accused of that too, that I should not have said that. Mm -hmm. They say that was wrong. The certain little fellows say that was wrong for me to say that. No, it wasn't. You, you are our father. And I know father so. would tell us. You best believe I'm going to tell you that. What not to do. I would tell you, look, what I would do, he would have to go get a, a test or something let me know. Right now. I'm not laying down with I would not take his word. You don't stay out all night, two, three now. You crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go like this, because I got to get through this. Pastors, by counseling and visitation, at times give directives. So that's a directive that I gave that he did not agree with. Right. Yeah. He said, I should not give that directive. Yeah. And advice in matters that should not concern them. See, they shouldn't concern you too. Under these sanctified busybody, that's what they say I am. Mm. He said, I'm a sanctified busybody. <laughs> the sheep are in bondage. So they say, in Jay, they say that y'all lives are in bondage to me, founded upon the advice and the directives that I give y'all. Mm -hmm. Did I bring y'all into bondage to me? So that's what I have been accused of too. Mm -hmm. Every aspect of life is under microscopic scrutiny and liable to demands made by an overzealous pastor. So they said the demands that I put upon y'all is because I'm overzealous. They didn't say the word of God. Mm -hmm. I ain't never gave nobody nothing without scripture. Amen. 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 I ain't never gave nobody nothing without scripture. Mm -hmm. Yes, what you want, daughter? Oh, what does overzealous over mean? That means I'm going beyond the zeal that the Holy Spirit has given me. I'm doing too much. Thank you. It's like when you come up here and I ask you and I hug you, I say, how you doing? I say, how's it going at work? I say, how's Jeremiah treating you? Mm -hmm. Is everything all right? And you tell me okay. And then you come back again. Then I say, then you say, Pastor, I need to talk to you. So what you need to talk to me about? Jeremiah doing this. The bills ain't been paid. This ain't happening. Then you know what I'm saying to you? Why you lie to me? Because what did you tell me? Everything is all right. Okay. okay. Right. So you sought to protect your husband, but now you don't got tired. You want to tell on them now, don't you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's how that worked out? That's yeah, that's how that worked out. Exactly how it worked. So yeah. now you tired of them. <laughs> now you won't tell on them, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But how many times I ask you, man? Every time you come to Every time I ask you, I say, how you, how you doing? How's it going? How's it going? Uh -huh. I'm, a I'm a father. Yes. I'm a pastor. Yes. How's it going? Everything's all right at home? The bill's being paid? Everything is all right? Yes, sir. Everything's all right? The children going to school? Mm -hmm. Are your children studying? Are they read? No. Come here, Jeremiah. Come, come, come here, Elijah. Come here, Elijah. Mm -hmm. What did your mother tell you? The Bible tell you, your mother, father, blah, 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 Somebody tell me why it happened. No, sir, somebody tell me why it happened. Somebody show me why it happened. I'll give you scripture. Show me why this happened. All of y'all, all of y'all, I ain't say quote nothing but around. I said, show me scripture, mount around. I said, show me scripture, mount around to keep talking. Show me the scripture. Why did this happen? Show me the scripture. Acts 17 and 5. Read, Mama Rhonda. There you go, read. But the Jews would believe not. That's why it happened. Because of the Jews that believe not. Moved with envy. Moved with envy. <laughs> Took unto themselves. Took unto themselves. Certain lewd fellows. Certain lewd fellows. Of the baser sort. Of the vulgar and low sort. Gathered a company. 
gathered a whole lot of people together, made phone calls. <laughs> and set yeah. all the city on an uproar. Set the ministry on an uproar, didn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And assaulted the house of oh, yes. <laughs> And sought to bring them out to the people. There you very go. And that's what that that's what we that's that's what happened. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. Exactly. God gave it to me this morning exactly. when I was coming out the door. He gave it to me when I was coming out the door this morning. Mm -hmm. He gave it to me when I was coming out the door this morning. This is what I've been accused of. This is what I've been accused of. I'm a sanctified busybody. Here we go right here. Children must run to him for decisions. Huh? Is that true? Which are to be made in all matters. And they should, right? Because where you're not supposed to be at. No, 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 no. Somebody don't forget. I'm going to read it one more time. Children must run to him for decisions. Not in the valley of decisions. Thank you very much. You're not supposed to be in the valley. You're not supposed to be in the valley of decisions. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. I don't make the decision. You just come to me with the advice and the counsel. Yeah, yeah. And the final decision is made by the who? No, it's not. The final decision, you come to me for you, man, I'm around to come to me for uh, for advice, directions, and counsel. Who makes the final decision? You do. No, I don't. No, no. we make the decision. No, you don't. Who makes the final decision? The Holy Spirit. No, it don't. Holy Spirit? The, no, it, no, he don't. Who makes the final decision? Who? Yes! Good God Almighty. They make the final decision. Oh, okay. Based upon the word of God that I give you. Oh, yeah. you, you always tell yeah. me what you say. What I say? What do I say? You told me that oh, just the other day you said what did Van say about it? I, I, said, give, I say, Van, yes, this sir. is what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. I say, Van, you are, I say, Van, you are preeminence, mm -hmm. strength, Intellectual power you did. and wisdom in the house. I say this is what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. I say your decision has to be founded on this word right here. Amen. So they Amen. make the decision Amen. how, J.D.? Somebody word. Same thing, my through, same thing. I just put my word. Amen. And what you tell me to do. So what? Go sit down. Go sit down and submit your head up. And you say that's what you're going to do, that's what you're going to do. And you go over there and sit down. You shut your mouth. This is not America. Is this real? Man say, no, we're not going to do it. Then he, he don't do it. He's the authority in the family. It's not America. Amen. Amen. They come to decisions. They have to make decisions about cannons. Man say, um, we... They not doing my daughter like that. Mama mm -hmm. Robin may want to do it. But Van say, no, nope, that is not going to happen. They not doing that to her. Mama Ron is supposed to say what? Okay. Thank you. Go sit down somewhere and do what? Go. Deny oh. self. Thank you. And what, Charles? Deny self. And deny self. She's supposed to go somewhere and sit down and deny self. What she's supposed to do. That's what people don't want to do is deny self. That's why I told you the greatest and magnificent thing that ever happened in the world is the father denied himself. You got to deny self. Amen. Yeah, because see, they, that, that's a really good because women have to realize that they can't play the role of us women. They can't. They they can't. And, but society and and and, 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 and the husband and the husband got to realize he don't play the role as the pastor. Thank you. Right. Amen. Don't be trouble in the house. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They say it is a it is with the sight of relief mm -hmm. that some sheep escape such ministry. Mm -hmm. So they believe because they <laughs> went out from us, they escaped from me being mm -hmm. 
a mm -hmm. sanctified busybody, yeah. poking my nose yeah. in their personal business, mm -hmm. being overbearing, arrogant, mm -hmm. and domineering, mm -hmm. cruel, and severe. Mm -hmm. They say, wow, Whew. thank you, Lord, we got away from that. Uh -huh. That's what they believe. This is not a spiritual context at all. Mm -hmm. Huh? This is not a spiritual context at all. Oh, we know that. All, 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 it ain't, ain't nothing in here. Talking about escaping the ministry. Yeah, no, that, that, that ain't nothing in here. Ain't nothing in here biblical. That's, that's, what, what, that's why I'm showing them. This is what they. This is what. This is how they left, Terry. This is why they left because of what they read in this book. Okay. And they applied this to me and say, "This is how I am." And for those of you who watch it. Because many keep asking me, they really don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. So this morning just hit me. And he gave me that scripture. Mm -hmm. He gave me Acts 17.5. Mm -hmm. Once sheep have fixed, well, other sheep have fixed character traits, which are evident to everyone in the body. What do they need to do? <laughs> what they need to do, man? Because them characteristics is fixed. Yes, They've sir. been predestinated to be conformed to the image of Christ. Right. Amen. Awkward habits right. and mm -hmm. tendencies yep. make a certain brother yep. less useful in the church than he might be. All of this is talking about a denominational setting. Mm -hmm. They applied it to a truth setting. This is a truth setting. This is not a denominational setting. You don't find no deacons and no mothers and no boards and all of this that he's writing in this book is a denominational setting. This where we you are right now is not a denominational Amen. setting. No, it's not. Amen. This is not a democracy. Right. And so this is spoken of as being an American democracy church. That's what this is. Yeah. That's what the setting is, so you can know what's going on. It's like it's like. First Paradise Missionary mm -hmm. Baptist Church, Rose. Mm -hmm. His sin-related quirk of personality is a bit troublesome to the assembly. Quirk means evasion. Frustrated that gentle rebukes and patient entreaties have not cleansed the blemish from Christ's sheep. They say, see, we are Christ's sheep, not his. Mm -hmm. Some elders take the rod of church discipline in hand and beat out the spots. So they say, I take the word and I beat y'all with that word to beat the spots out of you. So that's what they say I do. It's what I've been accused of. Now all of this happened from one incident when I rebuked a certain lewd fellow for fornication. Not one time, two times, three times. For just sinning, period. Because he broke my law, he was lying and everything else. So he decided to take revenge, this certain little fellow. Okay. This is why all of this happened. That's why I took you to that's why I took you to Acts 17 5. I'm just showing you what God showed me. I don't care, I don't care about the slander, the rejection, whatever they say. I don't care. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm just preaching what God gave me this morning, Jeremiah. Yeah, I am. Now <laughs> So they say, and this is an abuse of church discipline, which God intended to be used for extraordinary and public sins, which I had not exercised in this ministry, which I should have. Should not. Yes. Yes. But I was displaying and giving an example of my Lord and Savior. I was being merciful, patient, long-suffering, bearing, forbearing. Hello? Mm -hmm. yes. It says, involved too is an audacity which decides that advancement and sanct sanctification must be made at once. He said that I demand that you be conformed to the image of Christ right now. That's what I've been accused of. No roads. No. No roads. Deny. Self. <laughs> now, nah, huh? See, now, nah, huh? Then I sell. Because it's hard. <laughs> it is hard. We're going to read. We're going to read. Y'all got your book. Uh, uh, You got your book? No. 
Chief, uh, Christian Chief Two Lessons. Are you? Well, pull it out of it. Yeah, it's hard. Here we go. Not easy. What are you talking about? You think it's easy? You think it's easy? No, sir. Rose said it is hard. Get, get your, get your, get your Christian Chief Two Lessons. So what? Wait, 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 wait. What did God decide to teach y'all this morning? Because <laughs> y'all don't like it, do it. Mm -mm. Don't feel good to your flesh, do it. You don't like it, do you, J.D.? I know J.D. don't like this. I know, I know you don't like it. So what are you? Almost still in the garden. Uh -huh. What do you got to do? You got to deny yourself because this is what he gave me to preach. I got to deny myself. But this is what he gave me to preach. This is what he gave me to preach. Hello? What I got to do? I got to, I got to deny myself. Turn to page 42. 42. What do you think I got to do? You think it's not hard for me to set up there and say it's about me? Too cheap. You got it. All right, I'm on page 42. I got to read, church. All right. I'm on page 42. Okay. Y'all y'all ready? Yes. You got it, J.D.? Amen. As all must be what, J.D.? Laid down at Christ's feet. So we must what? Not dote on anything what? Here below. Amen. I mind you're not the what? World. Neither expect any sufficiency from anything. We don't expect nothing from what? Self. What else? Life. What else? Heart. The way of man is what, church? Not I wish I had a witness. The way a man is not in himself. No, he's not. No, he's the not. way a man is in Christ. Amen. Amen. Therefore, see the vileness of these things. Trust not them, for they will surely what? Fail. Fail. Jonah 1. Jonah was making a shorter cut to go to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. Everybody looking for a what, J.D.? Everybody looking for a shortcut. <laughs> yes, sir. Everybody want a shortcut. Yeah. He lost everything. <laughs> oh, no. Will you take a what? Shortcut. <laughs> this morning, I went down and ran into a dead end in an idea. Because I tried to take a what? Shortcut. <laughs> I tried to take a shortcut. I want to go. I wanted to go this way, and I said, man, I'm going to turn here. Because I wanted to take a what, Neil? Shortcut. I get to the end of the street. I want to go this way. What did it say? Did he? Uh-uh, what did it say? Wrong way. Wrong <laughs> way. <laughs> what did it say, Mom? Wrong way. No, it didn't say, I thought you said it. It didn't say wrong way. What did it say? I wanted to go this way. Uh -huh. What did it say, J.D.? One way. It said one way. One way. <laughs> I want to go this way, man. I want to go south. Mm -hmm. So I said, man, I'm going to turn right here. Yeah. Then I'm going to go south. Right. But when I got to the dead end, J.D., what did it say? One way. One way. And that was <laughs> one way. That's what the people's problem is. They want to take the shortcut. Oh, you going that that's y'all see? Let me tell you. Yeah. We working our ways to trials, tribulations. We, we working our way back. Ain't no shortcut. Ain't no shortcut. No shortcut. What it said in this uh shadow of the cross. Three. It, is, it is with a sight of relief that some sheep escape such ministries. I say they ain't want no fire and trials. They no, get no tribulation. No fire, no tribulation. You gotta go through the fire to get purified. They want a shortcut. Yeah. They want a shortcut. Much what you say? What you say? Much oh, okay. Everybody, they want a shortcut. They don't want a better cross. No, they don't. They don't want a better cross. No, they don't. Jesus' crucifixion was to teach us the better cross. Yeah. Yeah. You got a better. You got to deny yeah. self in every area of your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I keep telling you. You know what I'm trying to keep before your face, Terry? Look at your father. He's the first one that did it. First one. He could have walked up and left the universe. When it started a whole nother one somewhere else, J.D. 
but he would have been fickle minded, wouldn't he? Because yeah. he started a work he wouldn't have been able to finish, as the devil said. They would have said, oh, huh, you stopped working on that, but you weren't able to finish it. Huh? That's why you destroyed that universe. Pick another. See, angels can't depend on them. He's fickle minded. He wouldn't have been true. Say it again, daughter. He wouldn't have been true. You best believe it. He's teaching us to be what? True. We're being true to the cause, y'all. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, what you say, J.D.? God is not a man that he should lie. <laughs> they think they denied self. No, they didn't. <laughs> no. Don't you know that hit me this morning? They went out from us. What if Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would have went out from us? What if the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had left us? What if they had separated themselves from us? Because of all of our wickedness, all of our sin, yeah. all of our evil, all of our evil speaking, all of our hypocrisy, right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all of our works of the flesh. Hello? Amen. Yeah. That's what I want your mind at, church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think if they, if the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had went out from us, bros. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. I gotta go get through this. As all must, as all must be laid down at Christ's feet, so we must not dope on anything here below. Admire not the world, neither expect any sufficiency from what y'all? Anything. Self, life, parts, etc. The way of man is what? It's not in himself. Therefore, see the vileness of these things and trust not to them, for they will surely what? Fail. Jonah 1. Jonah would make a shorter cut to go to Nineveh, go to Tarshish, but God sent a whirlwind. God sent tribulation, didn't he? Mm -hmm. God sent fiery trial, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Cast him into the sea. Then he had enough of following what? Himself. So that's what, don't you see what they got to have? God got to cause them to do what? Deny self. Deny self. Well, God need, God need to send them a what? A world wind. You best believe it. God got to send a whirlwind. Therefore, he concludes that they follow lying vanities, forsake their what? Own oh, mercy. Forsake your own mercy. Before Jonah thought it was best to go to Tarshish. But after he saw it otherwise, therefore let us see how our what? Own institution and ourselves have nothing. Thank you very much. <laughs> let us see that our what rose? Own sufficiencies in ourselves. Talk to me, man. Has nothing. You, you don't have no sufficiency in you. Nor expect anything from me. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ain't this deep? Wait, sir. Wait. What? What? Well, come on. All sufficiency of ourselves is nothing. Not expecting anything from them. Where is that? That they think they they more mature now? Yeah. Uh huh. They have sufficiency in themselves. Yeah. Right? That's what I'm telling you. So this is going against that. Yeah. That's what JD was saying. Ain't nothing biblical in it. That's why y'all don't like it because y'all got scripture in you. Y'all been taught. So when y'all reading this garbage, y'all like, no, oh, man, this ain't right. But they in the carnal mind when they read it because they had sufficiency in themselves. They say, here it is. I found what the problem is with him. Eureka. This is a compliment. I struck gold. They say, look, I found what the problem is with Dennis. Yep. That's what they say. Look, ain't this him, y'all? Ain't this what he do? They did not what? Deny himself. He didn't deny himself. No. That's what I'm saying. Yes, sir. They say he's he's a sanctified busybody. Mm -hmm. Poke his nose in other people's personal business. Uh -huh. Say things from the pulpit that he should not say. Yeah. Ain't this him? We mature. He try to run everybody business. He don't want us to grow up. Ain't this him? And the carnal mind say, yes, it is. Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, I don't know if that man is sin or not. <laughs> but I, know I, I know one thing. I understand this word of God a little bit. That I do understand. I do understand that word of God. Did he teach me that? They didn't say that. Mm -hmm. Do 
y'all understand what I'm reading? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Therefore, let us see our sufficiency. Everybody with me? I am. Let us, therefore, let us see our sufficiencies in ourselves as nothing, mm -hmm. nor expect anything from it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, because it is not in us mm -hmm. to help ourselves. Like that. Like that. Mm -hmm. We really think we can help ourselves. It's not in us to do what? Help uh, ourselves. They say, I'm going to help myself then. Uh -huh. And I'm going to escape. And I'm going to escape from him. Amen. So what is there to ponder or consider or observe if the help is not in ourselves? I don't know, Jesus. You simply deny self. But amen. Say it again, J.D. You yeah. simply deny self. No, you say what is it? There's to nothing to consider, think. to ponder, or yep. to observe. Yep. You just you deny self. Deny self. That's what they that's what I'm teaching y'all. Mm -hmm. Van tell Baba Ron to know. Ain't nothing to ponder this. No. no. Ain't nothing to consider it. No. She just have to do what? Deny deny self. Self. Just deny self. <laughs> yeah. That's all you got to do. Eventually, I said, you know it was a good thing that I denied myself <laughs> about that. Do y'all understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is deep. All right, here we go. Therefore, let us see our own sufficiency in ourselves. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. Nor expect anything from ourselves. Mm -hmm. Therefore, because it is not in us, it is not in us, it is not in us. What is not in us? Decision. It is not in us. He sounds completely different than Walter Chantry, don't he? Because he got scripture and definition. Walter Chantry, don't he? He got scripture and definition. Walter Chantry ain't got no scripture and definition there. That's his carnal mind. Therefore, because it is not in us to help ourselves, let us lay all. What? What? All. What? Lay what? All. In order to lay all, what you got to do? Denial. Lay all at the feet of Christ and expect nothing from what? But expect everything from who? Christ. From Christ. When we have renounced the authority of all these and their sufficiency, then thoroughly never love them more. Let not your affections be hankering after them. It's talking about self, life, parts up there. Like, Hello? Amen. Thank you. Your affection shouldn't be on self. Amen. A servant, if he be once out of a bad service, he never returns there again. In Matthew 4 20, they left their what? Amen. And follow what? Christ. In Matthew 8, when the disciple would go bury his father, Christ would not let him what? Return again. Let the dead bury the dead. So what did Christ tell him to do? Amen. Thank you very much. Everybody wanted to follow Christ, and he would not let them do what they want to do according to their carnal kind of mind, would he? He already told him, no, deny yourself. You can't go up against your carnal kind of mind. I'm God. I'm God manifest in the flesh. I said, follow me. They said, well, I got to go home, and I got to go home and bury my father. He said, no, 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 no. Let the dead bury the dead. You come on. What did he tell him to do? Deny told him to deny himself. Amen. Amen. When he wrote on the ground, he told him to be quick to let him know if he was Satan. When he wrote on the ground, he told him to deny himself. What you say? When he wrote on the ground, he told him to deny himself. Come on, man. Let the dead bury the dead. Say it, our Savior. Yeah, Savior. Yes. So let us not have our minds hankering at the self. Mm -hmm. When we have read our fingers of self. Mm. What did uh -oh. Terry say? As Lot's wife did after the soul. She said, remember Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. Therefore, look not what? Bad. Bestow not your mind upon them. If you can thus follow him, you if. If. And, and that's what the Bible said. Yes, sir. If you have the ability. Everybody ain't got the ability to do what? Deny, deny self. self. You got to deny self if you're going to follow him, Rose. You just can't follow him. The first thing you got to do is what, man? You got to deny yourself. If you can, thus follow him, you are a disciple of what? But if you know anything that have authority or sufficiency or is to be loved besides Christ. Wow. In a fit opportunity, you will do what? Forsaken Christ. Christ. And stick to it. Stick to stick to what? Forsaken Christ. Stick to what? Deny yourself. But if you, I'm at the bottom of the page. Anything that oh. have authority or 
If you know anything, they have authority, sufficiency, or is to be loved besides Christ. Mm -hmm. In a fit opportunity, you will forsake Christ and stick to it. What is it? Anything mm -hmm. that have authority, sufficiency, or is to be loved besides Christ. And what is that? Somebody tell me what is that is that all of us have? Carnal mind. And that's myself. Mm -hmm. Self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. The self. The carnal mind is self. Yep. Yes, but if you know anything to have authority or sufficiency yes. or is to be loved besides mm -hmm. Christ, mm -hmm. in a fit opportunity, you will forsake Christ and stick to your carnal mind and self. For that reason, here we go. Therefore, I beseech you, look to it, because that crisis and self-service cannot stand together. Thank you very much. Amen. To have self in what? In anything. I wish I had a witness. Say lot, meditate. To have self in anything. Well, I'm gonna get dangerous now, so look. Just to put out Christ. For what? Just to put out Christ. To have self in anything. You put out Christ. You just put Christ out. This can be. You can't have self in nothing. You can't have self in nothing. Read it, well, read, 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 J.D. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 24. Read. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. You best believe it. Yes, because their because their crisis service and self service cannot stand together. You can't serve Christ and self and the carnal mind at the same time. Amen. Amen. That's why I say Christ service and the Father service cannot stand stand together, can it? No, they can't. That's why Jesus said what? Christ serve two masters. No, uh, Christ service. All right, now listen, 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 listen. What are we talking about? Crucifixion. Christ service and the Father service can't stand together. That's why Christ said what? My Father, my Father, my Father, forsaken me. No, He said what? If it be Thy will, will. Oh, that the cup pass not for me. My will is to let the cup pass. What is your will, Father? Both of them could not stand together. Don't you forget? Wait. My will is to let this go yes, pass yes. from me. Nevertheless, yes. not my will. Your will be done. What is your will, Father? It's he right. answered him when he didn't give him the man answer, didn't he? Right. Yeah. Stay on that right. cross. Do what? what? To the end. What you say? To stay on the cross. To stay on that cross to the end. That's my will. Mm -hmm. yep. Stay on that cross to the end. He that endured to the end. Now you understand what that means. When you first started the ministry, one of your favorite saints, Lord knows. Ooh, I used to be like, this man, please stop saying it. Drink the cup, bro. Drink the cup, Jenny. Got it. You gotta drink the cup. Oh, got it too. Please go let me drink the cup. Drink the cup. You gotta drink the cup. That's self denial. That's self denial when you drink that cup. Yes, it is. All day long, amen. You hey. gotta drink that cup. What'd you say, man? All day long. You best believe you gotta drink that cup all day long. Yes, sir. It's better. <laughs> Evil thought rise up in my mind against JD. I'm casting out. Man, get out of here. That's my daughter. That's my sister. Uh -huh. I don't care what she did. I love her. That's out of here. That's my preacher. Amen. That's out of here. That's up. If you got a problem, take it to the source. Preach. Preach. Say it again. You have a problem, take it to the source. Amen. Because he's the one who calls it. That's right. Preach. Because that crisis and self-service cannot stand together. Can it? No, they don't. Can, can Christ's service and the Holy Spirit's service stand together? Mm -hmm. That's why he said he shall take of mine and show it to you. Mm -hmm. He shall not speak of his own service. Mm -hmm. That's why I'll keep saying it. What if the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit would have went out from us? Mm -hmm. That ain't no attribute of God. Ain't nobody going to tell me that. No. Ain't nobody going to tell me that. Ain't nobody going to tell me that, J.D., like I'm stupid. Preach, preacher, separating themselves. I have to de when them. somebody tell me that, you know what I have to do? The Deny myself, myself from going off on them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> right there. I have to deny myself. Right there. When you tell me something like that, I have to deny myself. Because the Christ, 
crisis and self-service cannot stand together to help self in anything. It's to put out Christ. No man can serve two masters. The one will command, come on y'all, the one will command one thing. Talk to me, y'all. Hey, look, it says command. So how many kings you got there? Okay. Two kings. Okay. Two kings. It says command. Yes, sir. It, say, it doesn't say acts. It says what? Command. It says command. You got two kings in there. Yes, sir. Two. Hello? Mm -hmm. Say a man cannot serve the king of England and the king of Spain, for the king of Spain commands to go to mass. The king of England commands to serve the true God according to the gospel. A man cannot fight for the king of Denmark and, and the emperor too. So Christ commands to kill your what? Lust. And you will what? Keep them. Keep them. God's commands. Understand what it says. Mm -hmm. These two commands cannot stand together. There cannot be two sons in one firmament, nor two gods wherein. Therefore sin must be first what? Before Christ can be up in the what? If a man be a higher servant, he must not be at his own disposal, but at the disposal of his master. So if you be Christ's servant, you must serve him. But if you will live as yet, list and be free from his power, read! You cannot be his disciples. But if you will have Christ to be your king, you must not do what you list. But submit to Rome, but to submit to him. There go our favorite scripture. What is our favorite scripture on, on Thursday night? Romans 8-7. For the wisdom of the flesh is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Therefore avoid it and submit not to the authority of it. Amen. As we cannot exercise ourselves in the service of these and Christ too. So secondly, another argument is this. Because the duty we owe to Christ is the main and chief duty. We must bestow the chiefest service on him. Therefore, unless we renounce all for who? Christ. We cannot be his servant. For he must have the what? Chief his servant. Peter stood it out. And yet after denies Christ. Mark how our Savior tries him and 21, 15 to John. Love is you more, love is you me more than these. Feed my what? Right. As who should say, if you love is not me more than these, then you cannot not serve me. Then the point is clear. If without self-denial, the authority of Christ cannot be acknowledged. If our hearts cannot be bestowed on Christ unless we trample on what? Ourselves. <laughs> What? That's what we no, you don't want to trample on self. Mm -hmm. Then it is clear. We must deny ourselves before we be Christ's disciples. the flood of miseries have overspread over the co other countries. It is near us. For that reason, it is fit to do what? Deny ourselves. And to prepare for a self-denial. You ready, Rose? Mm -hmm. Ready, J.D.? Mm -hmm. Both of y'all said it's hard, didn't it? Mm -hmm. It shows us it is not an easy thing to enter in Christ's service. <laughs> All right. Or to persevere at the, in the same. Mm -hmm. It is not an holy day task or an easy matter. But it, what is it, y'all? Very, Very hard. hard. Very, Very hard, hard and hard. difficult. It still ain't come. easy. It should be It ain't easy. It really should be difficult. Huh? I say I think it should be difficult. Because it allows us to appreciate what he's doing. You best believe it. It shows us that it is not an easy thing to enter into Christ's service. Or an easy matter, but very hard and what? This straight gate makes a man strive, pinches him sore. He must do what? Strip himself you count it a matter of nothing to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. I grant it is an easy matter to be such as you be, to patter over through prayers mm -hmm. when a child of five or six years old may do. Many a drunken and civilian will go to heaven if this must if this would serve turn. But alas, it is a harder thing. Then you are what y'all. And it's not no lie. It's hard. It ain't easy going to heaven. Mm -hmm. It ain't easy denying self. Mm -hmm. 
Hello? Mm -hmm. What does it say, J.D.? You must deny life and all. What does it say, J.D.? You must de deny life and all. Read, Rose. Woo. And not only some prophets of pleasures in life. Read. Yeah, and have it not only in a readiness to be bound. Come on. But to die for the Lord Jesus. Come on. Or to suffer anything for him. Oh, it is not an easy thing to deny a man's self. Do they deny themselves? That will not deny a look, a feather, a vain fashion. But can you deny life, yeah. liberty, lands, livings? It is easy to go to prison. Hmm. Sure you that have your secret lust. No, he said, is it? I think, mean, is it easy to go to prison? Hmm. You that have your secret lusts, is it easy to leave, leave them? Hmm. Oh, no, it. It's not easy to be a what? Christian. Christian. You drunkards and adulterers, bid adieu to your lusts. Your gold must what? The God must your gods must die. It is not an easy thing, but y'all. To lay them down. It is, it is a word of instruction also to show us the reason why many that seem to follow Christ persevere not in a what? But turn all into what? Small. Such as have took press money of Christ and turned mm. to the enemy. The cause is, they went not the ready way. They did not deny self, therefore in conclusion, they did not what? They that take up the profession of religion and forsake the profession of a religion when opportunity is offered, the reason of it is they did not what, y'all? Forsake themselves. Therefore they what? Forsake our Savior. Savior. The way of self-denial, the way of self-denial Christ walked in John 8, 50. He sought not himself and his own glory. Nay, he emptied himself when he led <laughs> captivity captive. He laid down all. Had not he denied himself, woe had been to our souls. Didn't I tell you that? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. But he laid down his life. If you purpose to be his disciples, you must lay down life self too. Hello? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why those in former times thought their money as good silver as in others. Yet they have turned away in the day of what? Bad. And I become the what, y'all? Yes, yes, Christ. 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 Thank you very much. He didn't deny themselves. Hello? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Everything. 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 They're not willing to do that. All right. So we're on page 62. We stopped at the bottom. It says, involved too is an audacity which decides that advancement and sanctification be made at once. If you ain't sanctified, and you have made not advanced in Christianity. You've been sitting here 15, 20 years, 10 years, something wrong with you, ain't you? Yes, sir. If I'm in front with you. Amen. Yes, here we go. No elder has been called to charge the timetable of growth and grace. Is that true? No. It said no elder has been called to chart the timetable of growth and grace. Is that true? No, it's not true. Turn your Bible to the book of Hebrews. I'm, sorry. I'm at the top of page 63. What it say, but no elder has been called to chart the timetable okay. of growth and grace. Okay. I ask, is that true? No. Yes, it is. Yes, it is true. No elder has been called. Yeah, he has been called to chart the timetable of grace. He said, no, did he? He said, but no elder has been called to chart the timetable of growth and grace. Is that true? No. All right, no, you're right. I'm sorry. It is. He wrote chapter 5. No, Jay, you know who Hebrews chapter 5. All right. Hebrews chapter 5. Start J.D. verse number 11. Hebrews 5, 11. And then, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers. Oh, oh, he's charting. He's charting their timetable of grace. Yes. Is he charting their timetable of grace? Yes. yes. Read, J.D., all over again. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Uh -huh. for, when, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, uh -huh. ye have need that one teach you again, uh -huh. which be the first principles of the oracles. Oh, he's charting their timetable of grace. Yep. And are become such 
as have need of milk uh -huh. and not of strong meat. All right, then. All right, Candace, she putting her Bible out. She didn't have it out. <laughs> okay. So she putting her Bible out and she want to follow a scripture today. Okay. All right, then. We got to go back to Hebrews mm -hmm. chapter 5. Mm -hmm. And we begin reading at verse number 11. Okay. Read, Candace. Why you turn the page? Free J. Of who we have many things. Wait, what you what you you ready? Free. Free J. Of who we have many things to say and hard to be uttered. Uh huh. Ye are dull. Oh, you dumb! You ain't matured yet. You came here. But he said in here, no elder has been called to chart the time table of growth in grace. Read okay. it. For when, for when for the time he ought to be teachers. Uh, oh, that's the timetable, ain't it? Yes, it is. Oh, they should be teachers right about now. Yes. Go ahead. You have need that one teach you again. Oh, you haven't grown in grace. Right. So now we got to go back and start teaching you all over again because the time that I was teaching you, you didn't grow. <laughs> Which be the first. What you say, Rose? You didn't hear. You didn't hear. You didn't hear. You didn't hear. So now I gotta go back and do this all over again because man, you didn't hear. This dude don't know what he's talking about, do he? No. Yes, it's terrible. Because he's trying to prove his point to his congregation. Mm -hmm. He's going against some other men that don't agree with him. Mm -hmm. But that's all right. I'm using it as a teaching tool. Mm -hmm. This is what I've been accused of. Mm -hmm. they, I've been accused of, of, of saying J.D. should be further along right now in her Christianity than she was when she first came here. If Caleb was still sitting here and he ain't understand crossing that love, love, get no one Greek word all the time, I'm putting these Greek words here, something wrong with that dude. Right. Amen. Same go with, and with, with him. Mm -hmm. Same go with Josiah. 5 11, read JD. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Uh huh. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, uh huh. Ye have need that one teach you again, uh huh. Which be the first principles uh -huh. of the oracles of God. Keep going. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For every one that uses milk. Come on is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Come on. For he is a babe. But strong strong meat. Come on, they tell about they mature. Mm -hmm. Belonging to them that are of full age. So wait, 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 wait. What would be strong meat, somebody? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Amen. What is strong meat, church? Denial. Yes, but it's now your real strong meat. Amen. Self-denial, you real strong meat. Amen. Read, J.D. But strong meat. No, read, J.D. Okay. Of whom? Uh -huh. Okay. But. But strong meat. No. Self-denial. Oh. <laughs> Come on, slow folk. Amen. Come on, J.D. But self-denial belonging to them that are of full age. Come on. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern mm. both good and evil. You know, you know you shouldn't get up and leave, don't you, J.E.? Mm -hmm. You know good well you ain't supposed to get up and get out and leave the cross. I know this. You know that, that you ain't supposed to get up and leave and come down off the cross. Amen. Read it again, J.E. But, but self-denial, strong meat, belongeth to them that are of full age. Read. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised Come on. <laughs> to discern both good and evil. You didn't know it was evil for you to get up and walk out? <sighs> Romans chapter 2. But no elder has been called to chart the timetable of growth in, in, in grace. It is not the place of elders to demand. 
she cannot put the drip into conformity with pastoral wishes. You don't think so? I, I believe they can be whipped. Huh? I believe they can be whipped. They belong to what you say? Yes, sir. Wait a minute. I believe they can be whipped. They can still be whipped, sir. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me find my scripture right quick. Since I got the strongs here. Wait a minute. I believe they can. I believe they can. <laughs> <laughs> I believe. I believe they can. JD Rose. We thank God for Rose today. She ain't nodded out today. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't resting her head and she ain't blowing bubbles and eating Doritos. Self denial. <laughs> All right, look. It works. Come on, come on. I believe they can be whipped. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I believe they can be whipped, man. Uh, yeah. I believe they can be whipped and driven into conformity with pastoral wishes. If they script is right, Jeremiah. Huh? If they script is Jeremiah, hello? Mm -hmm. Jeremiah, yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 18 through 21. What does it say, Jeremiah? Now some are puffed up. Oh, they are? As though I would not come to you. Okay. But I will come to you shortly. Come on. If the Lord will. Come on. And will know. Not the speech of them which are puffed up. Oh, okay. But the power. Come on. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Come on. What will you? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? That was it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. They say you can't be whipped. Which one do you want? Uh, oh, oh, what you say, Jenny? What, 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 what you say, Jenny? Oh, what you say, Jenny? Tear it like that. Which one? What you say, Jenny? Which one do you want? You got a choice, right, Jenny? What will you? What will you, Jenny? What will you? We can do this the easy way. Do you want the rod? Do you want the rod? Yeah, amen. Or love. You want me to come in love? Or the spirit of me. The spirit of me. Which one you want? Which one? I serve. It's gonna go. Wow. I serve. Which one you want? You want the rod? Love. Or you want me? They say she cannot be whipped and driven into conformity with pastoral wishes. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, Jay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, okay. You got a Bible today, man? Oh, uh, yeah. How you like that? What the hell? Okay. We showed y'all something. Read it over there and unzip the bag herself. <laughs> Hebrews, Hebrews, chapter 12. 12. Amen. Hebrews, chapter 12. Amen. Come on, Jay. Start reading verse number what? Amen. Come on. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. What did all, what did all them cloud of witnesses do, y'all? They deny themselves. Free, J.D. Let us lay aside every weight. What, 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 what do that mean, J.D.? Deny self. Go ahead. And the sin which do so easily beset us. What do that mean, Rose? Deny self. Thank you. All that means is deny self. Free, J.D. And let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. Oh, he just told us to do what? Go ahead, JD. Looking unto Jesus. Who did what? Read. Who is the author and finisher of our faith? What did he do? There you go. Go ahead, read, JD. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Oh, he endured what? The cross. What is the cross? He endured self denial. Read, J.D. Despising the shame. That's something. What comes with self-denial, y'all? Shame. shame. Desperately. Read. And is set down at the right hand of, of the throne of God. After he did what? Denied himself. And dared the what? Shame. shame. Amen. Read. He got his reward. Amen. I gotta get back. Amen. 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 As the old folks used to say, no cross, no crown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety-nine and a half won't do. Uh oh, I'm going now. I'm going now. Read, J.D. For consider him that endured such contradiction 
of sinners against himself. Wow, he did what? He denied himself. Go ahead, J.D. Lest he be wearied and faint in your minds. And what? And self-denial. Amen. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. What does it say? My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. She cannot be whipped and driven into conformity with pastoral wishes. Yes, they can, can they? Read, J.D. What does it say? My son. My son. Come on. Hold on. My, My son, yeah. despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, Come on. nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Uh -huh. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, mm -hmm. and scourges every son whom he received. Uh -huh. If uh -huh. ye endure chastening, uh -oh. God dealeth with you as sons. Mm -hmm. as with sons. How do you endure chastening, Caleb? You endure chastening with self-denial. Thank you very much with self-denial. Self Go ahead. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Mm -hmm. But if ye be without chastisement, mm -hmm. whereof all ye are partakers, Come on. then are ye bastards mm -hmm. and not sons. Thanks. That's enough right here. Then he got on here, page 63, lording it over the flock provokes, provokes church fights. So they say that all the fights that take place in this ministry, I provoke them. And we have no evidence of that and splits. Mm -hmm. So they say, since I was loitering over the flock, that's why the congregation is split. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. Okay. I did that. Yeah, okay. now, yeah, we need proof of that. Loitering it over the flock oh, provokes okay. church fights and splits. Mm -hmm. A domineering spirit in elders provokes mature men of strong minds. Mm -hmm. So they say they have strong minds and independent judgments. Wow. Strong minds and no dependence okay. judgment. My judgment is free. My mind is strong. I'm a mature Christian. Christian. Look what it says. I'm a, I got a strong mind and I'm not dependent. I got independent judgment to lead the church. A dominating spirit and elders provokes mature men of strong minds and independent judgment to lead the church. Mm -hmm. They say, I live in the church because I got a strong mind and I got my own judgment. I've been for all the city. A, a, a dominating spirit. And then, you know, <laughs> you know what this though? If he was used a scripture, he should have said a dominant, uh, how you say that word? Domineering. A domineering uh -huh. spirit and elders provoke spiritual men, a uh -huh. spiritual mass, That's and right. spiritual judgment to the right. church. Best Everything he said was karma. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Because this is a uh, uh, Baptist setting. Right. That's all it is. And they don't realize that they're condemning themselves because mm. they're passing judgment and they're not. No, they, no they say they're not doing that. No. No, Terry. No, Terry. Terry, they say they're not doing that. Yeah. Now you ain't even been here. You don't know Terry. They say that we not passing judge. Terry said what they do. <laughs> Ter Terry, they say no, we're not. We're not passing judge. We're loving him. <laughs> yeah. exactly say we're not passing judgment up here. He don't understand. We're loving him. They tearing you up, and but they loving you. It said, domineering spirit in elders provokes mature men. So they say, I provoked them to lead the church. They say, they are mature, mm -hmm. and they got strong minds. Mm -hmm. But if they mature and got strong minds, they Amen. don't have what mind? Preach! Turn your Bible. Turn your Bible to Philippians chapter 2. They say they mature, and they got strong minds. Right? They say they got, they mature and they got strong minds. Right? I want, I want Philippians chapter 2. Are we there? Yes. Philippians chapter 2. Amen. Are we there? Amen. Yes. All right, come on, Jeremiah, read. If there be mm -hmm. any, therefore any consolation. Any consolation? Consolation from who? Christ. Any consolation? Consolation from who? From you. Consolation from who? Come on, Matt. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank you very much. When it say Christ, you know Christ Jesus on the right hand side of God, 
So he sent the comforter in his place. Come on, church. Amen. I'm going to send you another comforter. Mm -hmm. All right, come on, church. Now begin reading it again. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ. Through the what? Holy Spirit. There you go. And any comfort of love. From who? Comforter. Holy Spirit. There you go. In any fellowship of the Spirit. Oh, amen. Everything is done by the what? The Spirit. I wish I had a witness. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, son. If any bowels and mercies, uh -huh. fulfill ye my joy. Come on. That ye be like mine. Oh, don't be a strong man. No. It told you to be what? Like mine. It didn't tell you to be a no strong man and independent. Like mine. <laughs> he says, look, lording it over the flock provokes church fights and splits. A domineering spirit in elders provokes mature men of strong minds and independent judgment to lead the church. I believe that's the work of the devil. Because Paul said we should be what? Like-minded. Paul said we should be like-minded. Mm -hmm. Read it again, Jeremiah. If there be, no, excuse me. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ. Come on. If any comfort of love. Tell them what you're reading at. Philippians no. chapter 2, verse number 1. Read. If any comfort of love. Come on. If any fellowship of the Spirit, come on. If any bowels and mercies, yes, fulfill ye my joy. Uh huh. That ye be like minded. Uh huh. Having the same love. Uh huh. Being of one accord. Uh huh. Of one mind. Wow! It ain't saying nothing about Jeremiah having a, a mature mind by himself. I think we better read that again because preacher don't know what he's doing. He don't know how to teach. They know more scripture than me. They more devoted to scripture than I am. They more devoted to scripture than I am. They saints and they more devoted to scripture than they am. I don't know enough scripture. So when they mature in the scripture role and they come to me with that exposition, I should be complimented. <laughs> I'm going to read it one more time. This is what I'm charged with. This is the charge. I'm lording over the flock. By me lording over the flock, it promotes church fights and splits. A dominating spirit in me provoke mature men, a strong man, and independent judgment to lead the church. So they say they got, they, they got a mature mind and independent judgment by me having a dominating, dominating spirit, that is what caused them to leave the church. Mm -hmm. Read, son. If there be, therefore, any consolation. What are you reading this, son? Philippians chapter 2, verse number 1. Read. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ. Uh huh. If any comfort of love. Uh huh. If any fellowship of the spirit. Wait. In your soul, JD, all of that based on the condition, JD. Uh -huh. JD, all of that is based on the condition. Yes. Am I right about it? Yes. Do all of us say if? Yes. All of us say if, don't yes. They say if, don't yes. Am I right? Yes. They say yes. if. Yes. if it's, it, it's, it's if in the talents. No. No. Oh, so it is in the original text. Yes. So everybody don't have a consolation of Christ. Yes. Talk back with yes. And everybody don't have what? The comfort of love. And everybody don't have what? Fellowship of the Spirit. I wish that had a witness. The Jews say they separated us being sensual and not having the Spirit. Hello? Start over Jeremiah. Read. If there be. If. Based on the condition. Therefore, any consolation in Christ. Yes. If any comfort of love. Yes. If any fellowship of the Spirit. Come on. If any bowels and mercies. Come on. Fulfill ye my joy. Come on. That ye be like my joy. All right, then what he said. Paul said, if any of that is in you, mm. don't have a strong mind by yourself, Jeremiah. Mm. He said, y'all be what? Like my mind. What else, Jeremiah? Having the same love. We got to have the same love one for another. Mm -hmm. So you deny yourself? I deny myself. What else? Being of one accord. Oh, we got to be of one accord. Uh -huh. You deny yourself. I deny myself. And of one mind. I was the man of Christ. Amen. What did he do? He Read, Jeremiah. Let nothing be done through strife oh, or vain glory. Oh, so don't, be, don't, don't, 
be don't be a don't don't have a be a man of a strong man and independent judge. Mm -hmm. That's strife and what? Vain that vainglory is I'm a I'm a mature man, I'm a strong man, and I got my own judge. Yeah. Okay. Read. But in lowliness of Oh, lowliness of man. Oh, yes. Huh? Yes. Not a strong man? No. no. Read it again, Jamie. Let nothing be done through strife. Come on. Uh-huh. Lowliness of mind. Lowliness of mind. Not a strong man and independent judge. No. It says lowliness of mind. It didn't say a strong man. Right. Then it, it says, it says a, a dominating spirit in elders provokes mature men of strong mind. Mm -hmm. It didn't tell you to have a strong mind. If you got a strong mind, you won't do what, man? Deny yourself. Thank you, Jesus Christ. He had a strong mind, yes, he but he did. done everything in the loneliness of mind. He denied himself. He did. He, did. he didn't have an independent judgment, did he? No, no. he said, no will be done. What? He, what he said? What? He said, no will be done. Oh, those words he got from the Father. Oh, so Jesus didn't have a strong mind and independent judgment. No. Oh, he had no sin. So Jesus did not have a strong mind and independent judgment, did he? Yeah. Read, Jeremiah, read it again. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. Thank you very much. They didn't esteem the preacher better than them, did they? They say, preacher ain't better than me. I got a strong mind. I got my own mind. I got my own judgment. Read. Look not every man on his own thing. Oh, Lord, well, what do you got to do to do that, J.D.? You got to deny self. Read. But every man also on the things of others. Read, sir. Let this mind be in you, which was in, also also in Christ Jesus. What kind of mind did he have, church? Self-denial. A man of self-denial. Self-denial. Let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Don't have no strong mind. He didn't tell you to have no strong mind. Okay. Strong man and independent judgment, that's arrogant, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's not lowliness. Mm -hmm. Nope. Mm -hmm. Promote rebellion. Okay. Strife and vain glory. Free mm -hmm. Jeremiah one more time. <clears throat> Let nothing be done through strife. But see, they mature. They got more scripture. They got the exposition of a text. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you say, JD? Their senses have not been exercised by self denial. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things. What things did they look on? Their own things. They didn't deny self, that's why they got up and left. They was looking at their own things. They weren't looking at yep. things up. They didn't even consider y'all. No, they didn't. No. They didn't even consider y'all. No, but the lies that they say they did. They didn't even consider you guys in here. Nope. They didn't even consider y'all. They looked on their own things. They looked on their own situation, their own circumstance. You all right there? What did he say, Mom? What's wrong? He said he didn't lightheaded. Oh, all right. Did you took you eat this morning? Oh yeah. You did. Well, your medicine at? I take it. Oh, you all right? Uh -huh. You sure? Positive. Is it too hot in here for you? Oh uh, no, I'm okay. Uh, you want some water? You want some water? Get get my bottle of water just now. We get lightheaded. We know what happened last time we got lightheaded. Yeah. You took your medicine this morning? Mm -hmm. And you ate too? Uh, yeah. Alright, give him some water. Might be getting a little warm in here. That heat on? Give him some water, Josiah. Let him drink that water. Keep an eye out. Yeah. I'll get stop in a minute. Come on, almost through. Get deep, baby. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, you be quiet. Don't yeah. you say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, you no, might be so too excited. I, that probably you. would be. I think so. Over exertion uh, a little bit. Yeah. You probably get too excited. Yeah. Control yeah. your energy. Yep. Control yeah. your energy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, come on, Jeremiah. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also, which was also in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Uh-huh. 
but made himself of no reputation. So when they got up and left and they didn't deny self, what did they do? Made himself a reputation. They made himself a name, didn't they? Yeah. They made himself of a reputation. Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Mm -hmm. Made himself of no reputation mm -hmm. and took upon him the form of a servant. Hello? And was made in the likeness of men. Come on. And being found in fashion as a man, Come on. he humbled himself. What? He humbled himself. Amen. And became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. All right. So now they say these very ones would have the greatest potential for fruit or lead the leadership in the assembly. So they say that what I did not do is I did not allow them to develop their leadership in the congregation. If I had, if I, if I didn't have a dominating, dominating spirit, they could have became leaders in this congregation. It says Dick dictatorial measures. They call me a dictator. Yeah. Oh. Say I'm a dictator. Yeah. They say I'm Pharaoh. Yeah. Dictate, dictatorial measures make lesser men craving and dependent. And they said, I stunted their growth. Mm. Okay. I stunted their growth. The Holy Spirit wanted them to grow, but I stunted their growth by having a dominant spirit in them. But it also has its harmful results on the Lord's over God's inheritance. It makes them egotistical and self-serving. So they say, I'm serving myself and I'm egotistical. Predominant in an elder's bearing toward the sheep must be patient and meekness in his servants. An exemplary walk must be his elder should be in samples even in lowliness of mind and kindness. They say, I don't have lowly mind. I didn't even know I was going there. They said, they say in all of that that we read in uh Philippians 2, I think, was 1 through 5 or 6 that you read? 1 through 8. 1 through 8, I thought so because I read it the other day. 1 through 8, they said that that does not apply to me. I'm not an example of them in lowliness of mind, and I'm not kind at all. I don't meet the needs of nobody. They say this ought to be, uh-oh, uh-oh. Hey, here go J.D.'s word. This ought to be demonstrated in showing deference to other elders and their opinions and rule. A pastor should show his flock how to be subject to other officers. We don't have that in here. He must not be too much in love with it. When it's rules to endure a barrage of disagreement. Ministers must know how to lose arguments. And they say that's what I don't do. I don't listen to nobody and I don't want to lose no argument. I don't argue no word of God. I tell you what thus said the Lord, you either believe it or you don't believe it. But we ain't finna go back and forth. I tell you that this is what it means, that's what it means. You don't like it, too bad. And they said, too bad. And I said, okay. Right. Is, JD, I got a hand out there. I got a hand out there. Everybody turn your Bible to... No, we don't have to turn our Bible to nowhere. It's already on here. All JD got to do is give us the hand out. Let's do this hand out and get Whitfield at home so he can go lay down somewhere. Whitfield, yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Good. That's, all, that's what I want to hear. But I'm, I'm still through. I preach what God gave me this morning. I ain't preach my notes. It's what God gave me. All right. Everybody got one? Everybody ready? Yes. Wait on Jay. Jay to the deal. Y'all ready? Yes. Y'all ready? Amen. This is Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 9. Mm -hmm. A hypocrite with his what? Wow. Destroyeth his what? Neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered from the mouth of the what? All right, ain't that deep? Yes. Yes. Uh, and hypocrite with his what? Wow. Destroyeth his what? Maybe. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered from the mouth of the hypocrite. Amen. Hypocrisy, designing ill. It is not only the murderer with his sword, but the hypocrite with his mouth that destroys his what? Neighbor. Decoying him into what? Sin. And into what? By the specious pretenses of kindness 
and goodwill. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you about him because I'm being kind to you mm -hmm. and I will good for your life. Right. So I'm telling you about Dennis. See, you don't know him. Did you hear me? <laughs> Death. Like the Pharisees. Amen. Death and life are where at? In the power of the tongue. But no tongue more fatal than the what? Flattering tongue. Honesty defeating the design and escaping the what? Snare. Yeah. Through knowledge of the devices of Satan shall the just be delivered from the snares which the hypocrite has laid for him. Mm -hmm. Seducers shall not talk back with Seducers shall not what? By the knowledge of God, the scriptures, their own hearts, shall the just be delivered from those that what? And so to destroy, but through knowledge shall the just be what? Delivered. From the hypocrite and what? Deceiving. From being corrupted and destroyed. Talk to me. By the words of his mouth. A hypocrite with his mouth can laugh, might be better translated infidel than what? Hypocrite. The latter, that is hypocrite, is one that pretends to what? Religion. They're using religion for secular purposes. Yeah. The infidel is one who disbelieves divine revelation. I wish they had a witness. They say, I don't believe that what, the, what God gave the preacher. Mm -hmm. The infidel does what, church? Is one who disbelieves what? Divine revelation. And accordingly is polluted <clears throat> and lives in what? Pollution. This is properly the force of the original word. Mm -hmm. Such persons deal in what? Slander and lies. And, thus, and often thus destroy the character or the name of their name. Besides, they are very zealous in propagating, propagating their own infidel notions. Mm -hmm. And thus, by this means, they do what? Destroy their name. But the experimental knowledge which the... Huh? There you go. <laughs> but the experimental knowledge... That's what the blind man had. That's what the blind man had. That's why he couldn't move. <laughs> hey, they don't want the experience, you know. <laughs> but the experimental knowledge which the blind man has oh, man. Yeah. of God mm. and his salvation. Talk to me, y'all. Mm. From being They tried to get him, didn't they? They tried to get him. Oh, kind of <laughs> what you say? Can I run? Yeah, run, run. <laughs> They tried to get the blind man, didn't he? He said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm telling you what I experienced. When you get that knowledge, you get puffed up. Let me tell you about this experience knowledge I had. I can see. <laughs> Hypocrites delude men into what? Error. And sin by artful objection. Yes. Oh. Didn't they do that to the blind man? Yes. 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 Oh, man. Against the truth. Yeah. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for truth. Thank you for resurrection. Thank you for grace. Thank you for agape. Thank you for pistis. Thank you for faith. We pray in the name of Jesus that you lead and guide us by your Holy Spirit. Cause us not to be hypocrites with our mouths. Cause us never to destroy our neighbor. Cause us to pray for our neighbor. That you love our neighbor. Give us more knowledge so that we may be delivered from the snares. The traps, the Jesus, or the devil. Be with us as we leave this place. In Jesus' name we pray, church. Amen. 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 That was deep.